Good evening. My name is Maxine Neesom and I chair the Athens Clark County Planning Commission and we welcome you to the June 4th meeting. In response to the state of emergency in Georgia regarding COVID-19 or coronavirus, this meeting is being held via a WebEx online meeting platform, which is being broadcast on YouTube and on Athens Clark TV cable channel 180. Members of the public have been given a chance to provide recorded comments on specific agenda items prior to 12 noon today. Members of the public were also provided the opportunity to email comments to the planning department prior to 12 noon today. Finally, members of the public may also address the planning commission in real time via electronic communication provided in the auditorium at 180 West Darty Street, subject to safe distancing measures. For those of you viewing the meeting remotely, you will find the meeting agenda on the planning department website at www.accgov.com forward slash planning. For those of you viewing the meeting from the auditorium, on the table outside the auditorium door, you will find copies of tonight's agenda, a sign-in sheet, and political campaign contribution disclosure forms for those wishing to speak in opposition to an agenda item before the mayor and commission. After staff presentation of an agenda item, we will receive public comment, first from the applicant and then from anyone in the auditorium, and then we will hear public comments recorded earlier. Ten minutes are allowed to address the commission for the applicant or their representative, and also for any specified interest group representative who has requested additional time prior to the meeting. Three minutes are allowed for anyone else who wishes to address the commission. After public comment, the applicant or their representative may request a two-minute response. Once the public hearing is closed, the Planning Commission will proceed to discuss and act on the item. We will receive no additional public comments unless requested by the Commission. When addressing the Commission from the auditorium, please speak from the designated place as directed by staff who are in the auditorium. For all speakers, please provide your name, your address, and your occupation for the record. <laughs> For those in the auditorium, a timer device will display an amber light 30 seconds before the expiration of the allotted time and a red light upon expiration of the allotted time. So please pay attention to the light so I don't have to interrupt you. For those addressing the commission remotely, you will also be expected to, it, to adhere to the specified time limit. <clears throat> Exhibits may be displayed by the applicants remotely or at the auditorium podium. Written correspondence received by noon today has been forwarded to the commission as part of the public record. Any additional written materials to be placed into the record must be read during public comment within the time limits previously stated. Please direct your comments to the planning commission and not to the applicants. And for those of you in the auditorium, please refrain from applauding or jeering any of the speakers. For everyone participating in this evening's meeting, please turn off or silence your cell phone. For commission members, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Use the chat box if you have a technical issue. Raise your hand to the camera if you'd like to speak. And please wait to be recognized. Remember that this meeting is being recorded. All right, so we'll move right into our agenda. Um, the first thing on our agenda is the introduction of staff reports and other documents submitted to the commission. Do I hear a motion that we enter those reports and documents? So move. Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. So Brad, you can see everyone. Yes. Okay, thank you. We have two sets of minutes that we will be approving this evening. We met twice last month. We met on May the 7th, as well as on May the 14th. So let's take those minutes in order. Do we have any um, corrections or additions to the minutes? 
If not, do I hear a motion that we approve those minutes? So, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Starbar. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Any, I, I can't, I'm sorry, I have to tell you all, I can't see everyone, so I'm counting on break. So, are there any that are opposed to the approval? All right, that's May the 7th. Then we're going to move to our minutes from May the 14th. Do, uh, are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? And do I hear approved? I'll make the motion. A second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please let it be known by raising your hand. Thank you. Any any um, opposed? All right. Um, Mr. Griffin, do we have any May Courts update or uh, any May Courts update? I do not have a, a report for you this evening. Um, but while I've got the mic, just real quickly, um, we did not receive any recorded message comments on any of the items, so we will not have any of those. And I did want to let anybody that may be watching that sent in email comments later. We had initially said noon. We're trying to do everything we can to get information to you guys. So if you sent it after 12 o'clock, we forwarded it to you anyway. So I don't want somebody home that sent it at 2.30 thinking that their comments were not sent to you because we sent everything we received today. Thank you very much. Um, and so with that, we will move uh, right into our first item. Oh, no, I, I, I assume there are no public comments on May courts. Uh, is there anyone in the auditorium that? I don't know. No. I guess I would see them if so. Yeah. I mean, we do have some individuals in the auditorium to speak, but not for this item. Okay. All right, then we're going to move on to our first item. It's old business. We have um, uh, had discussion of this item before. The item is um, Master Plan Development, case number PD 2019-11-3891, 300 Epps Bridge Parkway. And the purpose of this request is to rezone an existing plan development on 2.87 acres at 300 Epps Bridge Parkway from RM1 PD, which is Mixed Density Residential Plan Development, to CN PD, Commercial Neighborhood Plan Development. So, um, Rick, can you give us the information from the staff, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the location map <clears throat> showing the location of the subject property at the corner of Estridge Road, Estridge Parkway, Wood Lake Drive, and Abbey West Drive. An aerial photograph showing the same subject property. It's undeveloped at this moment. Just another aerial angle there. Okay, so we have one undeveloped parcel of just over two acres. It's part of a 1983 Wood Lake plan development. Uh, it, was, it was reserved for uh, retail use. Proposed increase of commercial space allowance is being asked, as well as allowance of residential use on the subject property for the first time. So the rezoning is to go from RM1 PD to CN PD to allow that extra commercial space, uh, other uses that would be allowed that, that zoning district. We are compatible with the future land use designation. And as all PDs do, we have a binding application report, plans, and architectural elevation. This is a, um, a little bit fuzzy, but the old uh, plan development from 1983. Uh, you can see in the green highlight the area where the retail is to be located along the parkway. Okay, and so here's the site plan that's being offered. Uh, one of the changes you'll notice is there is no driveway connection any longer to Wood Lake Drive. There will be an access to the Epswich Parkway. That'll be a ride in, ride out only, as well as a two way access on Abbey West Road. Uh, and that will get the traffic out to the traffic signal there at the at Epswich Parkway and Epswich Road. These are the architectural elevations. 
Okay, so the increase is to um, have more commercial space per business. It's going up to 6,000 square foot. That's for an individual unit. The total is, total is just under 20,000 square feet of commercial space. We are introducing residential use, 26 dwellings with 52 bedrooms. Rezoning will allow more lot coverage, a three-story building height, and a possible restaurant use. We have surface and substructure parking with a total of over 100 spaces. Again, the ride out, ride in, ride out only driveway connection to the parkway with a deceleration lane, a two-way driveway to the Abbey West entrance drive, which gives access to that traffic signal. And there are waivers requested for the residential density and the conserved canopy. This is a future land use map, which is not changing. It will stay mixed density residential. The zoning will change uh, from the RM1 zone to the CNPD. There are other commercial zonings in the area. Staff does find the proposal is compatible with the comprehensive plan and the future land use designation. Other commercial zones, again, are, are nearby. Uh, so we, are, we do recommend approval with conditions. We do ask for an additional waiver that's needed uh, for the driveway to come through a residential zone. Uh, and that's the uh, Dabby West driveway. That the traffic signal be upgraded GDOT standards. Um, the applicant has offered several voluntary zoning conditions, including restaurant hours, trash collection hours, construction activities uh, are curtailed to certain times of day, as well as days of the week. Um, and uses will be restricted to offices, retail, restaurants, and multifamily. Uh, the full list of conditions are on page seven of your staff report. And that concludes the staff report. <coughs> Thank you, Rick. Um, we'll move forward with hearing from the applicant, our, our designee, Mr. Smith. Are you um, making this I am. Yes, I am here, Madam Chair. Can everyone hear me? Yes, clearly. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, my name is, is Bob Smith with Smith Planning Group, and it's my pleasure to, to be with you tonight uh, representing the, the property owners and the, the applicant. Um, and um, I, I did uh, submit a few slides uh, to the planning department, the first of which is, is, is before you. And, and what I'd like to do is just run through these slides very quickly because they were used during the, the community meetings that we had, um, um, particularly between the time of, of preliminary uh, plan to, to master plan. Uh, this first slide, um, illustrates the the area of the the entire wood lake pd which is a little over 40 acres and and of course as as rick said we're only uh talking about the first uh two acres that, that front um uh Epps Bridge parkway next slide thanks and and, and this is the primary reason or one reason we're, we're doing this uh we're taking a a single use PD. Um, the, the, the current uses are, 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 are just retail, uh, very small um, uh, individual units of a thousand square feet. They are allowed to have uh, a 2,500 square foot grocery store, but, but it's much more auto-centric. And, and so what we're proposing is a mixed use development of retail uses, a restaurant use, uh, office use, and and in taking some of the residential density that uh, the the Woodlake PD has and enfolding it over the top, so we're effectively reducing the density behind the gate of of Woodlake. Um, and 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 these uh, circles represent a quarter mile walk, which is a five minute walk, and a half mile walk. We're all familiar with this area, and we know that there are are several. Um, apartment complexes within the, this pedestrian shed, uh, as well as many single-family homes, which uh, the goal is is to create more of a, a pedestrian destination in the area. Next slide. So the architecture really hasn't changed at all since the preliminary PD. Uh, it's very traditional in character. This is the front doorstep, if you will. Um, this is the, the main entrance, entrance drive. And you can see the, the ample pedestrian plazas uh, and how the pedestrians are, are protected with the, uh, with the raised planters. Uh, 
uh, creating a, a very vibrant place. Um, next slide. This is an aerial view of, of essentially the, the, the same area of the development. Next slide. This is um, uh, an elevation from Epps Bridge Parkway, uh, illustrating the entire development across the front. Next slide. And this is a, a, a section of the buildings um, showing how the site is organized. You can see the very bottom level is subsurface parking. Um, and then um, we have commercial on the ground floor. Uh, of the building on the far left side, that is an office building on both floors. Uh, it's more um, uh, on the other two buildings uh, to the right. Those are retail and restaurant uses. And then, of course, on top of that are residential uses. Next slide. An aerial view. Next slide. This is uh, a view from the rear of the, of the development. And you can see there, there are fewer windows, uh, particularly along the ground floor, uh, so, so that there is, um, uh, so, there, so it's not as transparent. And, and not as much light glare back there. Next slide. So this is the preliminary site plan, and I included it just to, to simply illustrate the differences between um, the original plan and the plan where we are now. And I'd, I'd like you to pay attention to over there at Wood Lake Drive. It's on the left-hand side of the screen behind Building C. You can see where we originally proposed a, a drive off of Wood Lake and, and through the various community meetings that we've had, uh, we have now removed that. And we also uh, provided more illustration along the, the common property line where the buffer is uh, and uh, where the trash receptacle is over there toward the, the, the top right. Next slide. Now this is, is the master plan that this before you tonight. You can see where the, the driveway has been removed from Wood Lake Drive. And um, we've enhanced the buffer along the back. We, we had always had an enhanced buffer. We, we just didn't detail it enough. Uh, so, so this illustrates more enhanced buffer. And we also moved the trash receptacle uh, plan south, got it a little bit further away from the property line. I think now it's about 50 feet from the property line. And that trash receptacle is completely enclosed with a roof over it. Next slide. So during the community meetings, uh, th this is a word cloud. Th these are the subject matters that, that came up. And, and I wanted to share these with you tonight because I, I think we've addressed uh, most all of them. Uh, and, and you can see, you know, foremost is stormwater. How are we handling stormwater? And uh, through these next slides, I, I, I think uh, you'll have a better understanding. Next slide. This is what we're not doing. Um, and uh, there was a lot of discussion about stormwater detention areas and how ugly they are. Uh, and I, I included this, uh, this as, as an illustration of what we're not doing because the lowest part of the site is on the Wood Lake side because everything flows toward that Wood Lake property line. So this is not what we're proposing. Next slide. This is an illustration of, of how we are handling stormwater. Obviously, it's a section through the site. Um, our project is to the left of the screen, and you can see the Wood Lake townhomes to the right of the screen. So what we're doing is, is capturing stormwater, obviously on the, the building roofs and on the parking deck, um, uh, surface, and we're conveying the stormwater into a, a subsurface vault system. Next slide. So here's a plan view and in, in, in somewhat um, diagrammatic uh, of, um, of how the stormwater system works. You can see there beneath the deck is a, a, an, an underground stormwater detention system. We've done these on, in several locations across Athens, beneath parking decks, so you, you simply don't see them. From here, uh, the stormwater uh, passes through a filter unit and then into a bio bio um, bio retention facility. Sorry. After that, it goes into the existing stormwater system 
on the site. Next slide. So these things are quite large, right? This is actually under the parking deck. Um, so, so the amount of water that they can hold is, is quite in, impressive. So that, that first rainfall, that, that this is where the storage is held, and then it passes into the system. Next slide. And next slide. So once the water pass, passes through a filter, it then goes into a bioretention facility. Uh, where some infiltration occurs. This is where that first flush uh, water is, is actually cleaned. And then any overflow goes into the stormwater system. Next slide. And these are quite beautiful, right? You've seen them around town. Uh, we've designed several and, and actually received several awards for our uh, bioretention facilities. So, so this is what would be closest to the, uh, the, the corner of the, the Wood Lake uh, property. Next slide. Um, there was a lot of discussion about how large the buildings appeared uh, in relation to the existing buildings in the area. So, so we developed this figure ground diagram um, illustrating the proposed buildings and the existing buildings in the site. Now, what this is showing is the actual footprint of the buildings. Uh, and when I overlay a, an aerial photograph, next slide, you can actually see where we are. Epps Bridge Parkway is, is to the bottom of the screen. You can see the three proposed buildings there in the middle, the townhomes to the rear, the townhomes to the side. And, and you can see that the scale of the buildings are very similar to what is already there. Next slide. In contrast, on the upper left-hand corner, you can see the size of the building, say the, 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 the little shopping center where De Palma is uh, at, at uh, Timothy Road. One minute, um, Bob. Okay, thank you. And then the Trinity building uh, is below that. Next slide. We um, uh, illustrated several um, sections through them through the development to show how the buffer works. And we'll very quickly go through these. Next slide. Um, you can see the, the plan view at the top of the screen and then the, this, the sectional view or the profile down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, again, our building is to the left, townhomes are to the right. Next slide. Let me just flip through these and you can actually see how the buffer works. Next slide. This is the thinnest part of the structure uh, of the buffer. Next slide. And across the entire buffer is a six foot opaque fence, right? 10 minutes. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Um, and so we will move into hearing uh, from any. Um, do, do we have any anyone in the auditorium who will be speaking uh, to this, Mr. Griffin? I do not believe so. I'd, I'd ask um, Robin to come on if there was. We don't. No. Okay. All right. Um, so if we have no one who will be speaking, that completes the presentation and we will um, discuss then as a planning commission. Um, any comments? Commissioners? Ms. Kinman, then Mr. Scanlon. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I, just, I just wanted to say, I think this is a, uh, a really good change to this plan. I, I liked it uh, when we saw it before. I understand the problem of the access to the Wood Lake Drive side. Uh, I'm impressed by the some of the comment that we got that uh, from people in the area who would like something to walk to, um, as, as well as people who live in the neighborhood. So um, I'm, I'm very much inclined to um, recommend approval of this with conditions, but I'll listen to the discussion first. Thank you. Ms. Kingman, I think your video is on. 
It sure is. Sorry about that. It's all right. Are there other comments? Oh, Mr. Scanlon, you were just, you were had your hand up. I did. I I very much like this. Also, uh, it's very obvious that um, after the first meeting, there was a lot of attention paid to what the, what the neighbors wanted, and it, all that was included. Um, I liked it then. I like it even better now. Thank you. Other comments? Any questions? Mr. Hall? Yeah, I just, uh, I agree with Alice and, and uh, Jim. I think this is a, seems like a great project and it, it clearly adds um, a lot of benefit to athens Clark County and to people within that half mile pedestrian uh, walking area to there um, in terms of calming traffic on what is a, a unfortunately very high speed stretch of Epps Bridge Parkway, as well as adding quality residential and, and attractive retail mixed use um, sort of pedestrian destination um, center. Uh, so I think, I think it's a, an enormous improvement to that corridor. And I've reviewed the, the public comments. There's clearly some you know, very strong support as well as some uh, opposition. Um, but I, I find myself persuaded that this is um, an enormous benefit, both vis-a-vis -vis what is there now and what could be there if we didn't approve this proposal. Um, which would be potentially a bunch of atrocious auto-centric retail space. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any other comments? Mr. Scarborough? Yeah, I just, I guess I just want to agree with everybody else. First of all, I want to uh, thank Mr. Smith and his group for the changes that they made to it for reacting to um, some of the comments that we made the first time. I wasn't as much of a fan maybe the first time, but I like it this time. The more I think about it, and the more I think about the the raceway that is Epps Bridge Parkway, yeah. this is like the first step, it seems to me, in a change to it being a place just to go past as fast as you can into a place where you might want to slow down and actually stop and do something. So, And I think there's been a lot of work put into fitting it in the best way that we can. So I, uh, I really appreciate that and I like it. Thank you, Jeff. Other comments? Ms. Morales. Hey, so I, I, I like this project. I, um, don't, don't think that my, my questions are, I'm just being a little nitpicky. So, um, just, I just wanted to clarify, I noticed in, the um, report that um, came from the applicant that there was a note about the restaurant not seating customers after 11. And in the staff recommendations for the conditions, the wording is uh, ceasing operations at 11. And so I just wanted to maybe ask the applicant um, if does that mean that if we were to approve these conditions that the restaurant would be closed at 11 or is there a, a I mean, I'm, I have never run a restaurant. So, I mean, does that mean if you seat someone at 11 and then as of 11, your kitchen's closed and you're ceasing operations? Um, and, and, and similarly nitpicking kind of thing, um, where the sidewalk curves around on the left side um, and ends, I was just kind of curious on the, on the plan, it kind of has this curve to the very end of it. And I know there's a sidewalk that goes through the next development. So I was curious how that connects with the other sidewalk there. So if you could maybe elaborate on that a little bit. Mr. Smith, could you help? Sure. Um, so let's talk about the sidewalk first. Uh, are you talking about the sidewalk connection into Woodlake? Uh, yes. Yes. Because I think there's, it looks like there's a driveway there. So does it just kind of end at that driveway? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. And then it, as it goes across the driveway, it picks up into the, into the, the, the sidewalk system within Wood Lake itself. But, yeah, but we did agree, we did agree to, to put a sidewalk uh, from Wood Lake into the development itself. Okay. Uh, and, and so that's what's meant to, to be illustrated there. Okay. All right. Um, reg regarding the, the restaurant and, and, and I had the, um, had this, I posed the same question to staff, I think, early this morning, and I'm not sure we really got uh, got it resolved. 
but but it, it, it's my feeling that that the way that that the, the self-imposed condition in our narrative is is more easily enforceable because you can close the doors at eleven o'clock and not seat anybody else and and be effectively closed versus trying to clean up all the dishes, mop the floors, get ready for the next day, and then all employees are vacated at eleven. So, so anyway, um, so I, I mean, I, I prefer the, the the condition as as we uh, had had originally stated. I, I think it's less confusing uh, and yet more enforceable, right? So, gotcha. I think that's why that kind of came up because I wasn't sure how you could say, okay, lights out, it's eleven o'clock. I'm sure there's a noise ordinance that would kick in at some point, but um, but yeah. Right. So, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I just have a couple of things that I, I want to say. I want to um, thank Mr. Smith for meeting with the community. And I think Mr. Griffin helped with that. Um, meeting with them, continuing to hear their concerns, working through those. And of course, I loved the word cloud. You know, the teacher in me had to just love the word cloud. But I think word clouds are great and they really do show um, it, quickly, uh, so visibly, um, where the preponderance of the comments are directed. And uh, that then allowed you to share that with us. And, and I appreciate that. Um, I heard you say at the beginning that the, your presentation was one that you used with the community. Um, and I, you may have added some slides for us or whatever. But I appreciate that, and I, I have to believe that the community uh, would have been grateful for that as well, um, at least would certainly show um, your intent to um, hear them and, and work with them. Um, and I have to say, um, as Kristen said, I'm not a builder or I'm not a whatever, but boy, am I impressed with the stormwater um, uh, system that you have that seemed great. So uh, just a, a few of those um, positives, but uh, all really directed at hearing the people. And uh, I'm grateful for your work with me. Then if there are um, uh, not any other comments, we do need uh, to reiterate um, um, that there are conditions that are listed here um, and we will um, make sure that we uh, have those in the, um, rec in the um, recommendation. Yes, Ms. Kenna. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to um, ex uh, approve with conditions. Right. Do I hear a second? Mr. Okay, so we this is a, this is this is not a second. My question is approval with what conditions? Uh, my motion is to accept the staff uh, report, the conditions that are in there that include the staff conditions and the self-imposed conditions as well. Okay. Thank you. And so then we had several seconds. Um, uh, let's move forward and I think take a roll call vote, on, please. So uh, may I just, just for clarification, um, when you just said staff conditions and the self-imposed conditions regarding the restaurant operation, those conditions are inconsistent. So which are, are we, uh, is the motion to, that the restaurant shall cease operations by 11 or? Or she'll seat patrons no later than 11. Mr. Smith. I'm, I'm, open, I'm open to a friendly amendment to my motion. So, so maybe the amendment would be with the staff recommendations um, minus the um, under other conditions number five to replace number five with that restaurant cell shell seat patrons no later than 11 p.m. 
It does mean that the restaurant would be open a good bit later. Um, I feel like the spirit of the motion is to have the restaurant closed and no longer operating by 11 p.m. Could we make it uh, no more seating after 10 p.m.? Right, that's what I was going to say. Would that be a, an appropriate amendment? I'm, I'm happy with that, yes. Okay, so restaurants shall seat patrons no later than 10 p.m. Works for me. So um, I accept the friendly amendment and I'll look to my seconder. Do we have a second? Hold on. Um, I do have a question. I would like to second that, but I, but I don't know if that's out of order. Matt already did. So go ahead. Do you have a question? Okay. Um, Mr. Smith, one of the conditions, the voluntary conditions that you all uh, put forward is that all forms of exterior sound amplifications uh -huh. shall be prohibited. Is there, for, let me, I want to be sure that we moving through this process correctly. So we have a motion yeah. and a second, and, I, and then we have a friendly amendment. I think we need to vote on that and then have the discussion. Am I not correct? I, I think that's correct. So do we need to vote on that friendly amendment? Can we not discuss the, uh, the, the motion, which I understood uh, Sarah's comments to be directed at clarifying or, or discussing the motion that's pending. But as in, in terms of procedure, I'm not sure. I thought we could discuss the motion after it had been seconded prior to a vote. Actually, I don't need to ask my question. It's not that important. So just keep going. <laughs> I was just under the impression that we needed the whole motion before we needed to, before we discussed it. But, and the whole motion included the friendly amendment. Uh, but, so now we're ready to vote on the amendment to the motion. Am I correct in procedure here? I want to make sure I'm correct procedurally. Don't we vote on the amendment? And then uh, 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 My understanding is that I made the motion and then there was a friendly amendment, which I accepted, and then it was seconded. So I think we can vote on that without having to make just one vote. I think that's correct. Okay. I'm certainly... Welcome to doing that. That's fine with me. Um, oh my goodness, someone is just not giving up on the telephone here. Um, all right, then I want a roll call vote if we could, please. Kinman? Yes. Morales? Yes. Gamlin? Yes. Dobro? Dobro? Who, which? You. <laughs> me, yes. Yes. I thought that was me before. Tucker? Tucker? I think Joey is not present yet. He was here on cell phone. But I think he's transitioning over, yes. I think he's muted. Tucker? Yes. Okay. He was muted. Anderson? I do not think he is on the line. Beresford? Yes. Ben Hall? Yes. It's unanimous? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Rick. Uh, seven seven votes in favor, none in opposition. Thank you. And so then we will uh, send that forward, uh, recommending it to the mayor and commission. All right, let's move on to our second um, application. You know, we have a number of applications tonight, so I have them spread out here behind me. Our se second application is um, um, Master Plan Development, case number PD 2020-01-19, 352 White Hall Road, 150 and 250 Pine Lodge Road. 
The purpose of this request is to amend and rezone an existing commercial neighborhood plan development to mixed density residential plan development uh, at this address. And so, Rick, will you give us the information that we need? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is a location map showing the subject property. This is adjacent to the Pinecrest uh, neighborhood subdivision off of Whitehall Road, as well as to the, the Coney River, middle of Coney River, I believe. Um, this is uh, 352 Whitehall, 150 and 250 Pine Lodge Road, Lodge Road. There's three parcels all together. Two of them are very small parcels. We have one large parcel. It's uh, primarily undeveloped at this time. There are a few residences scattered on the property. Future land use is traditional neighborhood, and that would not change. The zoning uh, right now is CNPD, and that will change to RM1PD. So this, uh, this is different than the preliminary plan. We talked to the applicant, and before we had uh, suggested that he look at this change, he was amenable to changing it to multifamily since there's only a couple of commercial buildings, almost all of it's primarily residential. And so to have a truer designation on the development, he agreed to uh, change it to multifamily or mixed density residential. Okay, so the request is to amend the zoning from CN to RM1 PD. It is compatible with the future land use designation. Again, three parcels, just over 33 acres. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is actually an amendment of the old PD. It's to revise proposed building types and architectural styles. The number of one to three bedroom townhomes would increase uh, quite substantially, and the number of one to four bedroom cottage, cottages have a similar increase. Total bedroom count and density would not change. We're talking about the same number of bedrooms. It's just a different way of organizing them. Uh, again, with PDs, but binding site plan, architecture, and report. There are six requested waivers. Uh, some of these staff findings to be not necessary. Uh, there's some confusion about whether this is a, a subdivision or a multifamily development. Uh, without uh, subdividing the property, we look at this technically as just a multifamily development. Okay, so here's the uh, the old binding, the current, I'm sorry, the current binding site plan on the property. And you can see how the, the townhomes and apartments are differently organized. And then here we are with the current um, plan development site plan. Architecture that was presented for the townhomes and cottages. Several of uh, those uh, different designs there. All right, so the uh, staff recommends approval with the conditions noted here. Uh, there are a couple of them we need to have met prior to Mary Commission consideration. Uh, we do need to amend the waiver request for building height to get a more accurate uh, measurement there. In the tree management plan, it needs to be revised now to denote the R1 zone. Uh, the one that's in yellow there is the change uh, that we talked about uh, with the applicant um, that the use of the this Commercial building, this is the back, the old Charlie Williams Lodge, that it shall be limited to the parking shown on the mining site plan. So that is a change from your staff report you received earlier. Uh, two separate access roads provided to fire codes guidelines and understand that uh, the applicant has talked to the fire marshal and that is very possible to arrange that. Signal timing modifications shall be provided by the developer for two uh, nearby intersections, the Whitehall Road, Barnett Shoals Road intersection, and the Barnett Shoals College Station Road intersection. So that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Um, do I know that we have some people in the audience, um, and this would be the appropriate time for them to address the commission, I believe. Uh, the, the applicant, I think, is on the applicant. Mr. Coons is here representing the applicant. I do think we probably need to do that first. Thank you. All right, Mr. Coons. Sorry, I did that last month. I almost left out the applicant. So maybe that's in my brain. That's quite all right. Uh, I'm, I'm, thank you for remembering me. 
Um, <laughs> my name is Josh Coons. I live at 205 Clover Street here in Athens, uh, and I'm a landscape architect that uh, uh, our, our firm worked on the original PD back in 2004, 2005, and, uh, and so our current firm is working on this amendment. So it's nice to see this um, sort of continue through time. Uh, I'm going to recap our last meeting, and then I'm going to sort of summarize the current submittal and end um, on a discussion about the waivers. Um, so, uh, again, the last meeting, I, we really appreciated the comments. I think what we heard loud and clear was that we really just needed to clean up this submittal. Uh, we needed to clarify the report and make sure that there's a clarity within the drawing. So we really kind of worked hard to do that. We wrote the entire report and left behind a lot of the baggage from the original PD just to make sure that it was um, ultimately super clear and what we were asking for with this amendment. Um, same thing with the drawings. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson isn't present because we really did make a point of trying to clean up a lot of what was going on down by the river because I know that, that was one of his original concerns. Um, we've continued to work with the neighborhood. Um, it's actually been a pleasure to work with um, Dr. Lodge and the Pinecrest uh, residents, uh, working towards alleviating some of their concerns that they brought forward in the initial review. We've been working with the University Heights uh, neighborhood about their concerns about trails and, and, and uh, other facilities in the conservation easement. Um, this has led to an environmental assessment, uh, dam inspection, voluntary planting of trees along uh, property lines where we're close to some of the existing buildings. Um, so it's, it's been some nice uh, conversations. Uh, we've also clarified with the Athens Land Trust the extent of the conservation easement we have within Pinecrest now and the logistics of potentially working within those areas later. But we've taken out a lot of those uh, um, elements from the original plan out because of um, complications therein. So to summarize the current submittal, again, this is an amendment to the original PD that was approved in 2005. Um, it represents largely a change in architecture. Uh, we're ultimately removing the apartment units and replacing them with more uh, detached cottages and townhomes. Um, while the staff report notes that there's a large increase in units, really the, the number of units only increases from 195 to 200. The overall bedroom count um, and density doesn't change from that previously approved uh, PD to the amendment that you have in front of you. Um, poor planning's recommendations, the underlying zone has changed uh, uh, from RM uh, to RM1 from the, uh, in this middle to the originally approved CN zoning. This has resulted in two of the uh, waivers, new waivers, one for building height and the other for conserved tree canopy, which we'll cover shortly. There were some concerns originally about um, stormwater in the initial submittal uh, relative to wording in the original report. We have addressed that and noted full compliance with present regulations. The amended PD plan actually shows additional errors beyond what was shown in the 2005 plan where stormwater can be mitigated outside of the buffers. We have also completed a full traffic impact analysis for the project. Um, in summary, and I'm happy to come back to uh, some of these details later, but the existing infrastructure along Whitehall Road and Barnett Shoals Road is adequate to handle the traffic associated with the previously approved density and the density in the amendment that you have now. There are some issues relative to intersection performance at peak periods. Uh, for the lit intersections at Barnett Shoals and College Station and Whitehall and Barnett um, Shoals, the performance issues can be uh, corrected with signal timing adjustments. There are no other improvements necessary beyond those signal timing adjustments to accommodate this traffic. Um, the other two intersections that were studied are the actual um, intersections of Cedar Rock uh, Trace and Barnett Shoals Road, where the existing subdivision comes on the Barnett Shoals and Pine Ridge Trace and Whitehall, where this exit on, exits on the Whitehall. These are controlled by stop signs at uncontrolled points along both of those um, roads. These intersections do have some issues given the length of time associated with left turn turning movements, um, where the traffic is not required to stop. But unfortunately, the amount of um, traffic that backs up and the waiting times is not significant enough to warrant new traffic signals. So um, these, these two uh, stop sign intersections, uh, according to the traffic impact analysis, um, you know, just need to continue to operate like this. And I know that is one of the concerns of the residents, and I think that's something that we'll, we'll continue to try to figure out. Uh, but there's no real traffic solution at this point in time, given the amount of traffic there. Uh, the waivers, there was a little confusion uh, over a number of these waivers coming into this submittal. 
but the updated staff report has confirmed which waivers are required based on the current plan submittal. Uh, they're now limited to building height and tree uh, conserved tree canopy. And again, it should be noted that these two waivers are the direct result of changing the underlying zoning from CN to RM1, which was a recommendation from planning after the initial review. Um, I got to be honest, I wish I had thought about that a little bit more now that these are the only two waivers. Uh, but I do agree with planning that the RM1 zone is a better representation of, of the proposed use in the new plan. And, and don't disagree with this cat, uh, classification. So with respect to building height, just to elaborate on that one first, the CN zone allowed structure heights up to 65 feet. The RM1 zone limits height to 30 feet. The townhomes exceeded um, the 30 foot maximum for two main reasons. Uh, one, given the proposed design, the lower level ultimately functions as the garage and formal entry. This allows for two cars to be sort of neatly incorporated into the townhome footprint but this also elevates the living and sleeping areas. Um, uh, and then with those areas, the upper floor sort of to maximize those areas is below the roof, the roof's above, as opposed to being incorporated into the roof line itself. That again, adds a little height. Staff did remind me that the correct measurement of height is to the middle of the roof pitch and not the top of the structure. Uh, as a result, this, that will, we will be adjusting this request moving forward to a maximum height of 40 feet as that measurement results um, uh, more accurately to the townhomes being approximately 39 feet and some odd inches high. So the um, conserved tree canopy waiver is the one I'd really like to kind of focus on for a little bit. The CN zone required a conserved canopy percentage of 15%. RM1 zone requires 35%. This waiver is not the result of the plans, plans changing uh, you know, from what you saw before in the preliminary review to what you see now. It's really just the result of changing the underlying zoning. It's kind of interesting because the original PD was reviewed at a time prior to our tree management plan ordinance. So we don't have really a good way to kind of judge where that was. There's no question that the current plan has a larger footprint than what was a pre, uh, previously approved. This is a direct result of sort of trading out that stackable apartment style unit. It's also the result of working towards meeting some other new current regulations like stormwater management. So um, it's kind of interesting uh, how these regulations over time uh, have affected this. So in your review of this waiver request, I, I would just like to review the big picture and some of the history of this project and what it did to conserve tree canopy within the subdivision. And I think that's important to understand that, you know, this project started as an extension, another phase of the original Pinecrest subdivision. Um, can you mind going to that next slide? So as stated in the report, back in 2003, a plan was fully approved uh, for development. And this is, this is what it looked like back then. This was uh, developed under RS5 zoning, um, was 187 units. Uh, and this plan would have had close to 0% canopy within its development footprint. Even under RS5 zoning with the tree management plan conservation requirements that we have now, it would have been uh, required to say 15%, which is still less than the 20% we're gonna work towards. But what's really interesting about this plan is it had no stormwater management. At that point in time, you literally could outfall directly to the floodplain um, if you had a direct connection. So uh, next slide, please, Rick. So in 2005, the plan we developed as an alternative uh, provided actually the same potential number of units and bedroom as that standard RS5 plan you just saw. Uh, in combination with uh, an extension of the upper subdivision into the RS-15 parcel that is above the Charlie Williams Lodge from Pine Bark Lane. Um, you see sort of a dead end in the upper left of the plan right now, that's Pine Bark Lane. Uh, that was going to be extended into the green space at one point in time. But when we proposed our plan, the owner immediately realized that he could get the same number of units with less infrastructure while simultaneously increasing the amenity aspect of the green space and the subdivision. So the result ultimately led to the permanent conservation of the land around the lake and west of the Charlie, north and west of the Charlie Williams Lodge. So uh, next slide, Rick. This is an aerial, oh, sorry. This actually shows the conservation easement um, that was developed. So to put this timeline, out there, uh, you had the original plan 2003. Oh, we're almost at 10 minutes. Goodness, one more slide, Rick. Just jump forward. So this is uh, what we just wanted to kind of take away. The original plan led to the conservation of the areas shown in green. 
Um, when you factor in our conservation efforts within the PD footprint at 20%, and then you factor in what that led to back in 2006, we're actually conserving uh, about 27 acres of wooded area in this location. One minute, Josh. Thank you, Brad. Even if you back out sort of the lake parcel, which is our, always identified as an amenity, um, we have about 18 acres, which is about 40% of this combined area. So um, as we talk about the tree, parse, tree waiver, we just want to kind of keep in mind the fact that we worked pretty hard in the beginning to help preserve what we have now. And even though we have to sort of look at that PD boundary line relative to the tree management plan guidelines, um, we actually have had a, a, a much bigger effect. So in closing, we welcome additional comments. Um, that will help us continue to prove this moving forward. We appreciate planning's approval with conditions. Uh, we have no problem meeting those conditions and we hope that you will agree uh, with planning's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coons. Um, and so now I think uh, we do have uh, some people in the audience who would like to address the commission. So we'll move to doing that. Mr. Griffin, are we? Yes. There we go. We should be ready. Um, I'm the applicant uh, for Pinecrest Village. Uh, good evening. My name is Henry Massey, and I reside at 5651 Clinchfield Trail, Petrie Corners, Georgia, 30092. I'm the Senior Vice President of Land Acquisition and Development for Rotunda Land and Development Group. Uh, Rotunda is a privately held real estate investment and development company and we are based in Sandy Springs. Through multiple equity funds and related partnerships, our team has purchased or is currently acquiring more than 40 projects and approximately 40, uh, excuse me, approximately 4,000 entitled and unentitled acres from Texas to Virginia. Uh, Rotunda will build a product at Pinecrest Village that will have a Southern coastal architectural vernacular which will be a theme that will be present really throughout the entire project. Uh, just to speak to the amenities real quick, our amenities will include a 3,000 foot clubhouse, a pool, access to the Greenway Trail, an internal walking trail system uh, that gives access to the Oconee River, to the North Oconee River. Uh, additionally, we hope uh, to be able to provide access to the river for both kayaking, canoeing, and fishing. Uh, we're very excited about the proposed community uh, due to its close proximity to the Oconee River. The mix of housing we're able to introduce through the original PD zoning and the rich history the property has to offer through the name recognition as the former site of the Charlie Williams Pinecrest Lodge. I am an alumni of the University of Georgia. I went and ate at Pinecrest Lodge. It was great food. Uh, we believe this community will be highly successful due to the ability to offer our clients both detached single family housing and attached townhomes where we can accommodate cars in garages and at the same time maximize interior living space. I look forward to continuing to work with our Pinecrest neighbors that you will hear from shortly uh, to minimize the impact our community will have through the development and construction phases. Additional items we are working on with the community are ensuring a safe traffic situation coming on and off Whitehall Road and working on establishing a unique identity apart from the existing Pinecrest community. In closing, we are very excited to be part of the Athens community and hope that our work to date on the PD amendment will meet the planning commission's approval. We will continue to work with your planning and zoning department concerning any additional comments and or suggestions they may have. Thank you for your time and consideration for this application. Thank you very much for your comment. Is there another comment? <clears throat> Hi, my name is David Lowe. I'm with the Water Director Pine Crash Community Association. Thank you for being here. Uh, I want to assume that 
Each of you has the brief that was submitted by our colleague, Dr. Gene Lodge. I'm not going to go into detail, but I want to hit a couple of the bullet points. The last one regarding calling the deer herd to the extent that the planning commission can recommend anything in this regard. I think that would be something important to consider. Uh, just recently, in the last few months, I've seen deer crossing the street right in front of my house. Uh, on one occasion, one of the deer had a broken front foreleg, broken at the uh, at the knee joint. So it was pretty clear it was hit by a car. The uh, Pine Bark Lane, the end of Pine Bark Lane, uh, there are some houses there that will be within 50 feet of one of the structures. Uh, that's almost in your backyard. And so we think uh, it would be very important to put some sort of site barriers there to protect the houses. Traffic is a major consideration. Uh, Cedar Rock Trace is by far the longest street in our community. And ultimately, with the cut through traffic, that will bear a lot increased motor vehicle traffic. Uh, so we're concerned about that. As regards the tree canopy, uh, we think it's very important that as many trees that can be saved are saved in a new development. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Are there any other comments related to this application? Yes. Hi, everybody. Kalispera. Egoime Mr. Blaylock. I live in Pine Ridge or Pinecrest, and I'm here to support the application, especially as, with regards to the tree canopy, because I know that that was something that Josh was very concerned about, that, uh, that Dr. Lodge says that to maintain the character of the region, it's not the quantity of trees, it's the quality of trees. So she recommends that they retain as many of the large trees as possible and not just clear cut and build everything. Second thing I have to say is about the traffic. In my own opinion, I think that the, uh, what they're, they're kicking the light down the road because I think that at some time that the traffic is going to be um, such that it's going to require some kind of a traffic control. And I say this because, you know, the, the, I've, the, this 112 page report that was written, they say that the, the posted Speed limit is 40, but you go up there and you'll see cars going significantly faster than 40. And so I think that, like I say, they, they're just kicking the, putting a light in someplace down there. They, they, they say that they can regulate it by monitoring the lights, but when you change one light one place, you're just gonna put the problem someplace else, in, in my own opinion. But anyway. I like Rotunda. I think it's a good project. I think that it would be something that would be very beneficial to Athens. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Are there other comments related to this application? We all good? That should be it. Thank you. So with that, we will... Um, from behind the rail, so to speak, and um, begin discussion with the commission. Do I hear comments or questions? Ms. Beresford? Um, I guess I would ask, in particular, looking at Mr. Lowe and Mr. Blaylock's and Dr. Lodge's letter, um, I wanted to ask either Josh or um, the person representing Rotunda to maybe respond to those four um, concerns that they have and and 
talk to us about what what you might what your thoughts are about those whether you can accommodate those and do you and do you have the do you have the document that i'm talking about actually we should ask that i do have that document okay yeah so in particular it's sort of cons I, I, I don't know well yeah let me i would just love to hear what you have to say sure um the and, and uh, I I don't disagree with uh, I'm I'm going to hit this point by point if that's okay but I don't disagree with um, uh, Dr. Lodge at all about um, quality versus quantity in the tree uh, canopy forest. Um, unfortunately, there's no way within the development footprint to ultimately work around every 10 inch caliper or greater tree. Um, but I think we can work really hard. On the edge of that footprint, and, and you know, within those zones that might be, you know, a little easier just to cut things down to work with the trees that are of sizable nature there, and work a little bit harder to save them. We just think they can go. I honestly think that um, we're going to do a little better than twenty percent once we get in there and figure out where a lot of our trees are, and start to count for individual trees, and start to look at quality versus quantity. Um, so. But uh, the best we can sort of say on paper now is the 20%. So I, I agree with her. We're certainly going to work towards that. We've had a lot of conversations about that in general, in particular about houses, the houses that are around the lake, and making sure that as we start to site those houses specifically, we know where those large healthy trees are, and we start to shift those house footprints in a way that we can get them in, not impact the trees, and preserve the views of the lake to the neighbors that um, are used to looking at that lake without houses in it. Um, the second point, uh, which is uh, the planting of 12 foot tall native evergreen trees, that is something that we had already worked into the plan. Um, we had looked at that area and the point that uh, Mr. Blaylock brought up, uh, or maybe Mr. Lowe, I'm sorry, that uh, where it's 50 feet away from the uh, houses that are Pine Bark Lake, we had already shown some evergreen trees there. Uh, it won't be a problem for us to work in um, a 12 foot tall tree. Um, depending on which evergreen native uh, is available at the, um, from the nursery. So that one's pretty easy. We'd already had that in the plans. Uh, the traffic, again, um, it, it, we, we've been talking about that since the traffic impact analysis was, was completed. Um, you know, from the traffic engineer side of things, and he's talked with the, the, uh, the city, you know, it, it, they're worried about the timing of, the intersections that are lit. Um, from the everyday person who has to live there, I totally agree with Mr. Blaylock. Um, you know, those stop sign intersections um, are gonna be tricky, uh, but no more tricky than they are now to make a left turn to some degree. The, the challenge is, and I discussed this at length with the engineer is, you know, relative to kicking the light down the road, what does it take to uh, warrant a light? Because there's a whole other process beyond the traffic impact analysis called a signal warrant analysis. And so you have to go through and, and start with that, that TIA that we did and then look at how long people are trying to turn left. And in his uh, opinion, we're not even close to uh, uh, triggering a signal at either one of those locations because technically you have to have uh, a minimum of 100 turns per hour for multiple hours and we're not even getting 100 turns per hour at peak travel times and so unfortunately again based in the world of, of traffic impact analysis we're not close to the signal at this point in time, it doesn't mean that there might not be other things introduced along that roadway at other points in time that, that actually make that come online. But unfortunately, even at our peak period, it's projecting um, not only this added traffic, but what they refer to as background traffic, which is just a general increase that will occur over the next five years. We're just not there for the signals at either one of those locations yet. So um, uh, it's just unfortunate that we're, we're kind of where we are in that density that, that we have. Um, that last point, uh, I actually love. It came up in um, the last conversation we have with Dr. Lodge and uh, she noted that when the vet school 
came online and developed that corner of College Station and Barnett Shoals that it really forced the deer um, downhill and, and, you know, required a, a or resulted in a, a more dense population. And um, I just don't know. I've, I've honestly never been asked to call the deer population before. <laughs> so I don't know how to respond outside to say that we're certainly um, sensitive to that. And I think that's a conversation that we can continue um, as this moves forward. I'm not a hunter. Uh, I know. I know the, the people that hunt deer say we're doing them a population by or doing them doing them some good by lowering the population in these areas. How we do that in this specific location is going to be something we we really have to kind of talk through over time. So. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Morales? Yeah, so I guess um, because I moved to Athens after this restaurant closed, so I was not really familiar that there was even a restaurant back there, and I was looking at the... So I guess, it, it, do I have a correct... that Just going through the report, like there's these stone houses, and there's like this big building. So these are all incorporated into the development, and the restaurant itself is going to stay potential restaurant space. That's the commercial spot that has the 12 parking spaces or 14 parking spaces, whatever. And then are the other cottages like incorporated into like, are they going to be part of the development? Like where people will live, buy them and live in them or are they going to be like, just, you know, how does that work? So um, the main restaurant structure and origin and the original structure of the restaurant, something that was added onto over time, the original um, uh, Pinecrest Lodge is 4,500 square feet of a much larger structure. And so the intent is to sort of retain the original structure and then find a use that will be compatible to the neighborhood. Um, a restaurant might work, a bar might work. Um, it could just be an event destination where uh, you're able to hire out the lodge for um, catered events or group meetings or even you know, neighborhoods, that sort of thing. Um, the, the restaurant itself, the old restaurant itself, um, and I only ever went there once. Uh, it's kind of an interesting experience, but um, uh, is the only structure uh, aside from the renovated wheelhouse that we anticipate being able to use in any sort of commercial fashion. The other structures, it likely would be um, not cost effective to try to renovate them in the commercial code. But we'd like to retain them because they add to the character and the part of the history of the area. And uh, so it's really probably going to get into more of a stabilization effort, something that people will be able to just look at um, and help tell the story of the Pinecrest Lodge. The um, original wheelhouse. Uh, the current owner of the property actually renovated the, that structure itself and put a small one bedroom apartment on top of the wheelhouse. It's a cool little studio apartment and um, that will be retained. It's included in um, our uh, unit count as one of the existing structures that would stay. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I'm more than happy to elaborate. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Coons. Any other questions or comments? If not, um, then um, do I hear a motion related to this? Ms. Kidman? We have just one vote today on this on this application. Do we just vote once? Yes. 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 Ms. Kinman. Kinman? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't speak on this, so I thought somebody else would make the motion, but I'm very happy to make a motion to um, approve with the uh, staff recommended conditions. Mr. Scarborough? I'll provide a second. Thank you very much. Um, 
Is there any further discussion or any other questions uh, related to this before we vote? If not, um, then let's do a roll call, please. Hinman? Yes. Morales? Yes. Scanlon? I would remind Mr. Scarborough that Scanlon does <laughs> Scarborough, and I vote yes. <laughs> I, I told you Rick needed a new microphone. Scarborough? Yes. <laughs> uh, Tucker? Yes. Um, Anderson is not here? Um, no. There's Ford? Yes. Paul? Yes. Paul? Yes, okay. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And so that information will go forward to the mayor and commission when they make a decision about this. Thank we'll you. move on uh, now to our um, third application of the evening. This is um, a special use permit, case number SUP-2019-10-3605 at 880 Belmont Road. Um, Rick, are you ready to help us have information? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the, here's the location map. Uh, where, where it's a big track off the road uh, at the intersection of Morton Road. You see it's undeveloped at this time. Just another aerial view. And about where the red square, I don't know if you can see that, it's about where the cell tower will be. Okay, we're going to retain the rural future land use designation. Retain the AR, AR zoning. It will have the special use symbol added. And the special use is to allow a telecommunication tower in the AR zone. It will be 150 feet tall, a steel monopole structure. It is surrounded by existing trees, so just the number of trees that need to be removed for the structure will be uh, and the driveway will be removed. No structural lighting, they didn't need any uh, for the FAA. The nearest residence is about 360 feet from the proposed location. They are meeting all ordinance standards. The access is being provided along a power line easement from Belmont Road for the most part, and then they will jog south. Uh, to the cell tower site. You can see the site plan here. Uh, get off Philmont Road using an existing Georgia Power uh, easement and then turning south to get to the cell tower. And then you see the structure on the right, uh, how that will look. And they are required to allow or provide co locations should other services need the, the antenna also. Uh, staff is recommending approval. It is compatible with the rural future land use designation for a low impact commercial use. Uh, the comprehensive plan promotes improved internet and mobile, mobile communications for all areas of the county. And there was an independent expert review that was provided, and he has determined uh, that the antenna is necessary for the service they want to provide to this area. And that was uh, added to your staff report. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Want to be sure that we're clear this is a special use permit for a telecommunications facility within an AR zone. Um, all right, then we'll hear from our applicant. Thank you very, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, it's nice to be with you this evening. My name is David Kirk. Uh, I am a uh, land use attorney at Troutman Sanders, and it's my pleasure tonight to uh, represent uh, Athens Cellular, uh, which is doing business as Verizon Wireless. So I'll just refer to it as, as Verizon Wireless throughout uh, my presentation. Um, I'd like to thank the staff uh, for their, their help and cooperation as we, uh, we did get the third party review that, that Rick uh, referred to. Uh, and. Um, what I'd like to do, if Rick, you go to the next uh, slide, is just start with a little perspective 
uh, about how wireless demand has grown just over really the past decade. Uh, the iPhone is, is just over 10 years old. Uh, and by 2018, uh, about 59% of Georgia households were entirely reliant on wireless communication for their personal, their business, and their emergency communication. If you add into that the, the households that are mostly wireless, and this is based on a, on a, a study that's done by, or survey that's done by the CDC uh, every year, or some, they, I think they've, they, they do it now every year, they used to do it every six months. But if you add in the wireless mostly households, you're actually over 75% of households uh, that, that either are completely or largely wi wireless only. Uh, the FCC estimates that about 70% of 911 calls are made from wireless devices. Those are not all made uh, from cars. About auto accidents, those are also made from, from residences and businesses. Uh, and, a, and data, which we're all, anybody that has a child uh, knows that data usage uh, and anybody really working from home now, which is pretty much everybody, knows that data usage has really uh, increased. Uh, tremendously. Um, next slide, please. I think Rick hit on every one of these that it is a 150 foot monopole tower capable of accommodating uh, Verizon plus three other carriers. It's on a large wooded tract uh, that's currently undeveloped. Uh, we need it uh, to address capacity and coverage deficiencies in the southern portion of the county and I'll show you some, some slides on that. Uh, the special use permit that we're seeking will allow us to do that. Uh, and again, it does meet all the requirements of the ordinance. Rick, if you go to the next slide, please. So this is the area that we're really focusing on trying to serve better. Um, the service that we would provide here would of course not stop at that yellow line, but that's sort of the, the main focus. That's an area roughly two and a half miles uh, across uh, on Belmont Road, uh, north of uh, Bob, Bob Godfrey and south of Morton Road. Next slide, please. Uh, this is sort of a busy site plan. It, it, it shows uh, what Rick showed, I think, without the, the, the clutter on it, but it does show the location of the, of the site uh, relative, to, uh, relative to the overall parcel. And as you can see, a good deal of the um, easement, the access easement, is uh, in the Georgia Power uh, Corridor. Next one, please. Uh, Rick showed you this as well, uh, just to uh, indicate that we do meet the required setbacks uh, for the, uh, that are set forth in your ordinance. Next one, please. So we're going to get into a little bit of the technical analysis that was uh, verified and, and also modeled by your, by your expert. Uh, you can see here that we have a number of Verizon towers uh, in uh, the southern part of the county and in adjoining counties. Um, the closest one is three miles away uh, from the proposed site. Next, please. This is where it gets, gets a little hard to, to uh, uh, to understand, but I'll try to try to do that. You see, each each of the towers has three sets of antennas uh, going in roughly 120 degree angles uh, uh, away from each other. If you look to the north, that is up on the site from our site, uh, there's a site called Malabarter, and if you look sort of at about 10 o'clock, there's a site called Barnett Shoals. Currently. The, the sectors of antennas that are serving or that are directed in this area or toward, toward this area are overloaded. They're straining to provide the service. That's why you see that, that brown uh, area from Malabar are sort of getting, getting spread out and, and um, scattered as we're, as we're moving south. Next slide, please, Rick. With, with the proposed site, you can see how the, not only is the service improved in the Bell Camp, the, the yellow area, but the service for Malabarter uh, is, is closer to the, 
to that sector and Barnett Shoals as well so that they are serving their areas better. They have more capacity, if you will, to provide service uh, in those areas. By capacity, uh, you may have seen at one point the, um, uh, the Verizon ad about the door getting bigger, where if you have lots of people trying to get through a small door, it slows down, it clogs up, and some people can't get through. Essentially, we're trying to make the door bigger so more, uh, more capacity, more data and can flow through those, those sites and improve the service in, 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 the, in the area. Next slide, please. Now, there was uh, the, the closest non-Verizon tower was about 4, 4.3 miles down to the south east or southwest of this site. Uh, one of the things that we did was look at how co-locating on that site might improve the service uh, in this, this black circle, the desired area of service. And as you can see, it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, to it improves service in that vicinity, but it does not improve service in the area that we're trying to uh, trying to improve. Next, please. Now, this is a that was a that was capacity. We're now moving to just basic coverage, and on a coverage map, you can see the key in the lower right. Uh, in building coverage is green. That's the best. That's where you're sitting. Know, sitting in your home or your basement uh, or your business, and you can get good service inside. Uh, the next one is in car coverage uh, and then uh, on street coverage, which means outside in your yard, sometimes outside in this particular spot in your yard, uh, facing a certain direction. And then the poor coverage is, is in blue. And again, let's go to the next slide and you can see how the proposed site improves greatly improves that that area uh, that um, we're focused on in, in southern uh, athens Clark County. Next one, please. Uh, again, looking at this American Tower uh, location, uh, it, it would improve service in the area of that tower, but it would not improve service in athens Clark that portion of athens Clark County that we're looking at. So I go to, I think the next slide is my, my final slide, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions at the appropriate time. This uh, site is needed to provide capacity and coverage improvements uh, in this portion of, of Southern Athens, Clark County. Uh, our analysis has been reviewed carefully and really recreated by your third party consultant who has verified uh, this the analysis of our need. And uh, on the first page of, of their report, uh, says upon review of the application, uh, they would recommend approval of the special use permit. Staff has looked at this very carefully as well. They too recommend approval. Uh, it does meet all the uh, requirements of your, of your ordinance. And so we respectfully uh, request that you recommend to the mayor and commission that they approve the special use permit. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to res reserve that two minutes if needed uh, to respond to any uh, questions or concerns that the public may raise. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Um, there is nobody in the auditorium. Okay, good. That's what I was going to say. I don't have any indication there's anyone there to speak on this. So then the commission will address this application. Comments or questions? Mr. Scarborough? I have a, a probably a technical question for Mr. Kirk. Um, looking at that large 82-acre site, I think it is, what is it that drives the actual location of the tower within the site? Is there is it topological or is there some other reason? I, I, I note that it, it, it could be farther away from the closest house without getting significantly closer to the next closest house, I think. So I'm just kind of curious why why that spot? Well, typically you have topographic conditions, obviously. You want to minimize the uh, intrusion on the site, and you also have to work with the landowner to find a, a location that the landowner is, is willing willing to lease. 
And you have to do that within the context of trying to to meet all of the requirements of, of the ordinance. So it is a combination of things. Um, I don't recall if there's any wetlands on this site. Um, I think staff may have mentioned some. Uh, I can't recall off the top of my head, but obviously you have to you want to you want to avoid wetlands and and other uh, other places uh, as well as lower spots. This spot, this location is actually slightly lower than the road, um, which staff mentions in their their report. So it would make the you know relative term would would make the tower seem a little bit lower uh, in in height than it actually is so to answer your question it's it's typically a, co a combination of things i was not the site acquisition agent on this but i've done enough of these to know that you've got to juggle a lot of variables uh to uh to meet the need uh and to to get a site that works for the landowner and works for verizon and and also works within the the uh the limits of the ordinance okay thank you you're welcome thank you for the question thank you are there other questions or comments if not we'll um move forward um with our um, vote do i hear a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Thank you. A second. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, is there are there any other questions or any other comments that we need to address prior to the vote? Okay. Could we have um, a roll call vote, please? Barbara. Yes. Tucker? Yes. There's form? Yes, sorry. All? All? Yes. Kinman? Yes. Morales? Yes. And Scandalin? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. All Thank right. you all very much. Thank you, sir. That information will go forward to the mayor and commission. Let's move to our next um, application. Um, I think we're about halfway through group. <laughs> so we'll move forward. This um, application is um, a zoning map amendment. Um, case number zone 2020 02 698 um, at 255 and 295 Research Drive. Um, the request is on the subject parcels uh, located at 255 and 295 Research Drive from commercial office plan development to mixed density residential zoning with conditions. And um, I believe that there will be two votes. Uh, one vote will have to do with the future land use map and the other will have to do with reason. So, um, Rick, are you ready to give us the information we need? Yes, ma'am. All right, this is the location map on the north side of Research Drive. Two parcels are Currently undeveloped. The building you see in the aerial photo has been taken down, so it currently is an undeveloped site, except for um, I guess some surface parking that was left over. A couple of offices in the area, the low-key uh, type office building, and then you have uh, the Seasons, uh, just a little bit further down. I think uh, Brad mentioned County Corner earlier to the site. Uh, apartments do back up to the site across the river. Uh, excuse me, across a creek or carrying buffer in the back. So we have uh, future land use change being proposed from employment to mixed density residential, which doesn't have to go to the area. Uh, we have a, a zoning change from commercial office plan development to mixed density residential with some voluntary uh, zoning conditions. 
Uh, no, there's no binding plans. This is a straight rezoning except for the conditions. So there are no binding plans. They did provide a concept plan showing what it could, could be developed as uh, for multifamily, uh, but there are some other possible uses. Uh, they did provide several conditions. So any possible uses would have to meet these conditions, such as no more than 12 structures, 24 building units, 78 bedrooms, 78 parking spaces. They are asking or, or um, volunteering an extra riparian buffer, 75 feet right now. They're uh, providing a condition of 100 feet from the creek in the back. Uh, two points of vehicular access. And then uh, that's going to be a condition as well. And then compliance with all the RM1 standards. This again is a conceptual plan. So again, take this with a grain of salt. This is uh, something they could do, something they may not do. So it's, um, again, it's something they were showing how it could be developed for multifamily, but it's not binding. Staff is recommending approval of future land use. We do feel like the uh, change is more appropriate than the current employment center designation for the area and for the current zoning of CO. Uh, the comp plan promotes infill housing, but infill housing with easy access to everyday services. And in this case, the subject parcels are about a half mile from the commercial zone on Barnett Shoals, sidewalk network on Research Drive, nor an ACC transit route. Significant increase and increase has occurred in multifamily developments, impacting a balance of use in Athens Park County. And you guys have seen a lot of multifamily developments lately come through your way. We've seen a lot by right as well. We put those numbers in the SAP report. Um, and then uh, there are adjoining properties facing Research Drive that have CO or G, or G zoning with commercial or government uses. So uh, we feel like keeping the current zoning would be more compatible uh, with the properties directly adjacent uh, to the site. So staff is recommending denial of the zoning. Uh, we're fine with it, with uh, correcting really a correction to the future land use map. Um, so that, that uh, concludes the staff report. Thank you. Um... And we have uh, Mr. Lane. Are you ready to um, share your um, information with us? Yes, ma'am. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, my name is Ed Lane. I'm an engineer with Smith Planning Group. I live at 1171 Kingland Drive. And yes, I'll be speaking. Uh, on behalf of the applicant on 255 and 295 Research Drive. Um, so, you know, many of you ha have you know, probably familiar with this site uh, on Research Drive that, uh, you know, the rather infamous uh, veterinary research facility that used to be here and was demolished in 2018. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the other parcels in, in this area right across the street uh, from this and a little down the hill is kind of that vacant abandoned parking lot uh, that looks like, you know, nature is just taking it back over. And you have a little up the hill from there, uh, Loco's old headquarters, which they've moved and that building is vacant um, and has been on the market. And th these two parcels have been on the market for five years uh, as well. And you know, the, the point I'm trying to make is that this is kind of a weird area of research and drive that, uh, you know, it's next to a transmission line. It, it, it's kind of, you know, like Rick was saying, there's even a correction needed to the future land use map uh, based on what's going here. So, and I think our report made a, a robust case for the future land use amendment and staff agreed with that. So I really want to spend my time more I think focusing on the, the point the staff report made um, that was one of the criteria uh, of the zoning, item number two, which states, the proposed rezoning will not adversely affect the balance of land uses in athens Clark County. Uh, you know, I took that to be kind of the key, the, the key question to consider here. Uh, when, you know, when I read the 13 zoning criteria items, I thought this, proposed rezone uh, answers those pretty favorably, uh, all, all of the 13. I mean, some more favorable than others, some neutral, but uh, I think it answers most of those well. 
except for perhaps this one uh, that staff, uh, I think, uh, identified. And, you know, the, the question being, uh, you know, what kind of infill development does Athens want to see in, in a location like this? So it, it, it is a kind of a unique situation in that the future land use we are changing to is desirable. Um, and multifamily use is compatible in that future land use, but uh, the report is stating that in this particular location in town, it may not be. And so, you know, I agree uh, in general that, uh, you know, the fact that further down research drive, there are several other RM developments and across the street and behind it, uh, I still agree that, you know, ideally you would get one of the other uses here. Uh, the staff report listed some of those things like uh, a small uh, bakery, a bed and breakfast, a small office park and single family. You know, those would all be you know great uses to, to get here. But uh, I think my point is that does not seem likely to happen on these parcels uh, that have been vacant for five years. Um, and are very. This would be very expensive land to develop because of the topography, um, and 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 beyond that, just kind of looking at the adjacent properties uh, with some of these, you know, that have sat vacant and parking lots that have been scaled back. Um, you know, why why would a developer undertake very significant construction costs um, uh, when there's already some space right across the street? So. Uh, you know, I agree multifamily may not be the best use uh, for these parcels in this area, but it is a compatible use. Um, and I think in trying to answer that question in the zoning criteria of would it adversely affect the balance of land uses in Clark County? You know, I, I would ask the question, what's best for these, these parcels to remain vacant um, or to get a buy right? development that, you know, almost certainly would have to max out density and build very tall retaining walls all the way up to the buffer uh, in order to make it look. In fact, we were asked to look at this land for in a buy right uh, a fashion, and it was, you know, it was not pretty. Um, and so, or would you rather see a, a very modestly scaled project uh, with, you know, an, an incremental you know, addition to multifamily um, with front facing some front facing uh, homes and landscape improvements and putting this land to use, you know, generating tax revenue for the city. Um, all of the infrastructure is there, water, sewer, uh, you know, the street is maintained already. And, and this land, you know, almost 900 linear feet of our county street frontage is just vacant and has been for quite some time. Um, so, so that's my, my appeal is I think that staff has, has made a fair point of what we would ideally like to see here, but I'm asking you to consider what, what we have seen, you know, previously, what we kind of see around here and what we are very likely to see if this reason were to, to be denied. Um, you know, there, there is a hundred feet of elevation drop across this site. Um, and there's 30 feet of drop across its frontage which is, is not very friendly, you know, for a kind of office, office park development. Um, it's, while it is, it is not walkable, I mean, this is a, a, a auto-centric uh, site, but I do think it's a very convenient location for many. And, you know, many, many of the apartments kind of around here on Research Drive and, and also on the east side, I, you know, I've known many people that live in those apartments and they, uh, are not necessarily student centric at all. Um, you know, the people I know are certainly not students. So I, I think multifamily here, I, I don't think sh should be synonymous with students. Instead, I think it is a, a relatively affordable, you know, housing type for, for this area of town. And finally, uh, Madam Chair, I was just going to say I took your comments to heart at the last meeting. And so I did individually reach out to every adjacent. Uh, property owner uh, to this site, even the ones across the street. I was only able to uh, get a response from the Northeast Georgia Regional Planning Commission, uh, 
Um, they they did not have any strong opinions one way or another, but they appreciated, uh, you know, their n- neighboring parcel uh, contacting them. Um, but just wanted to let you know uh, that we reached out to see if anyone, you know, had input. And so uh, with that, I will pass it over to you guys and, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, so, Mr. Griffin, do we have anyone in the auditorium? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Right. Then we will move uh, to a commission discussion. Questions, comments? Mr. Scarborough? I, I, I just want to wax historical for a few minutes. I've been, I've been studying the history of this, this area because of uh, where I work and what, what we're doing. I work in this area. Um, it was meant to be a research park at one time for the university and for the state. So I, that may be what gives me a little bit of heartburn about this. It is just, you know, a little bit more residential sliding a little bit more down the road. I do agree. It is it is a challenging site. There's no doubt with the, the, the horseshoe and the river and everything else that, that comes around here. Um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around whether, whether this is the best thing. Um, I did want to say that the, the abandoned parking lot that nature is taking over is actually in use currently. So on a temporary basis for the next two years or so. So, you know, at least somebody's getting a little use out of something out there. But um, I just, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why this area is like it is and what it was meant for. So, and uh, that's. I'll stop right there, and we'll see if anybody else has anything to say. Thank you, Mr. Scarborough. Other comments, Ms. Morales. Yeah, I um, I guess. I- I, I know we talked about, or there, there's mention. I don't know, Rick, could you bring up the um, future land use map again? Because um, that was actually, I, I kind of can't really get my head around even changing that, I'll be honest. Like, just because, okay, well, I mean, I almost see it like better use as, as I know we don't want to do it government, but um, I mean, just because that property, um, on the back end is residential. I mean, it, it that faces Barnett Shoals though, which is a completely different um, scenario. Um, I don't don't really like the idea that because this property behind it, you can take it down now. Sorry, I just kind of need to see the colors again. Um, I guess I actually don't really like that change. I'll be honest. Um, I mean, just because that there's a property behind it, I don't think that there's really this the same um, relationship to residential along research drive. Um, and I know ironically the lamp behind me was purchased from an apartment uh, right next door in that apartment complex. Um, but, um, so I understand some residential on there, but I do kind of going back to what Jeff was saying. I mean, when we start kind of getting into our kind of employment areas with residential, what is that doing to our future potential along those corridors so anyway those are those are my thoughts on this i'm just i'm just hesitant about the whole thing thank you any other comments miss kinman um yeah i I just wanted to uh uh back up what what kristen just said um i'm i'm always a little concerned when we move uh land use from employment to residential because it feels like we have enough residential um so uh that, that you know i, I respect the, the staff recommendation on this um but I, I i share i share that same concern about about even the future land use change other questions or comments thoughts mr hall um, yeah, I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll echo that. I had the same uh, concern. I mean, you know, Athens needs more residential development. Um, 
but moving employment uh, office, you know, uh, center space in the direction of relatively low density residential development seems uh, like a move that only makes sense in the very short term. Longer term, you know, um, density is is the wave of the future and closer in. And, and um, I'm also troubled, staff noted this in the report by, you know, we want to see more mixed use uh, residential and other uses um, and more residential that is walkable to other things, which nothing on Research Drive is walkable to anything else. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not sold on even the, the land use change, uh, much less the zoning. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Other thoughts, comments? All right, then um, let's um, move uh, to see if we have um, a um, recommendation related. Let's take future land use first. Um, does anyone have a motion? Ms. Kenman? I make a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Morales? Second. Okay. All right. Are there any uh, uh, further thoughts or comments related to this before we vote? Future land use we're talking about. Future land use. If not, then... I, I keep calling for a roll call, but I think that it works better for people who are viewing to be able to see um, that vote. So I'm I'm going to have a roll call vote. Okay. Yes. Morales. Yes. Gandlin. Yes. Darbro. Yes. Tucker. Tucker? Joey? Yes. Thurstform? Yes. Good Hall? Yes. Unanimous? Okay, that's a unanimous vote to deny a change in the future land use. So I think we still have to move forward with, um, am I correct, Brad? We still have to move forward with a vote on uh, rezoning. Yes, ma'am. I mean, by ordinance, you you don't have the authority to rezone this property without an amendment to the future land use plan. But I think it's cleaner to go ahead and make the motion and take the vote. Okay. Um, do I have a motion related to rezoning this property, Scarborough? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to recommend denial of the rezone. Do I have a second. Morales. Okay, second. Thank you, Ms. Morales. All right. Any other comments related to this um, motion before we vote? Questions? All right. Then let's have a roll call vote, please. Scarborough? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Ford? Yes. Paul? Yes. Yes. Morales? Yes. And Scanlon? Yes. Unanimous? So um, that will um, be our recommendation then to the Mayor and Commission. Let's move on to our next uh, application. It is case number PD 2020-04-998. 130 Jennings Mill Parkway. This, the purpose of this request is to designate a parcel currently zoned employment office zoning with conditions as mixed density residential plan development to construct multifamily residential development. Uh, please understand that we will not be taking a vote on this tonight. The purpose of us addressing this is to provide information and comments to the applicant as they um, 
assess the need and determine uh, what they want to put in their application. So, uh, Rick, would you give us the information we need on this? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so this is the location map, the corner of James Mill Road and James Mill Parkway. You'll see a, a small parcel in the middle of this track. This is a small cemetery that's not part of the rezoning. But the property is currently undeveloped, backs up to Wickersham uh, subdivision and across Jamesville Parkway from the Legacy Mill Apartments. What's not shown, actually, let me back up. What's not shown right now is at the end of Jamesville Parkway right now, you'll see some apartments under construction called Low Water. So currently we have another development at the end of this parkway for apartments. This shows the environmental area. There is a creek in the back with a riparian buffer. So we have a development of over 10 acres of vacant land. Uh, again, that's around the small cemetery parcel. That's not part of this rezoning. Proposed multifamily development of four townhome style building with two stories along the road frontage and a two car garage basement level access from the rear with a total of 52 bedrooms. The zoning designation would change from EO to next density residential plan development. Future land use map would remain the same, would not need to change the multifamily residential designation. As with all PDs, we have application report plans and elevations that are binding. And as Maxine mentioned, um, we're just here for comments today. They'll come back with a master plan. This is the site plan showing the location of the apartments along the parkway. A little closer up view. You can see the cemetery parcel in the middle there. The elevations, the architectural elevations. The tree management plan. Some views of the site. This is going up the parkway from uh, from Jamesville Road, and this is going back the other way towards Jamesville Road. If the project is seeking to allow residential development, that'd be within the front yard setbacks and above the maximum height. So we do have a couple of waivers being requested there. Uh, 52 bedrooms, again, uh, in 20 units. And we mentioned the uh, four townhome style buildings, two stories on the road, basement level garages in the rear. And with those two waivers being requested, the reduction of front yard setback depends a lot upon um, a very wide future right of way. Because right now there's a, few, there's a 50 foot constructed right of way, but there's another 50 feet on their side of the, of the road for a future, possible future roadway expansion. And so they're sitting as close as they can actually to the, to the setback. Um, and then the increase of the height because of that difference as the topography slopes down to the creek. So we are changing the, the zoning. We're keeping the future land use designation. We do have some comments on this to be addressed prior to master submittal. Site plans to be revised to address ADA, accessibility, and parking. The architectural elevations provide heights for all the facades. The report should be revised to note a feature, the feature right with is 100 and had a typo of 150. The application report should be revised to correct the street address and owner name. Um, site plans to be revised to provide for a vehicular turnaround, that's per the ACC fire marshal, and address stormwater management concerns raised by transportation and public work. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Um, and now we'll hear from the applicant. I think Scott Haynes is going to start this. Uh, there are other individuals with him this evening that may be sharing the full 10 minutes. Thank you. Scott, I think you're muted. Nope. We're flagging him. Yep. Scott. Can't hear you. 
You're showing unmuted, but. Okay. Scott. Well, this is Bobby Cleveland. I don't know if you can hear me or not. We, I don't know where Scott's going, but I'm confident that he'll join us here shortly. <laughs> uh, so excuse me for, again for the interruption with Scott, but as I mentioned, I'm Bobby Cleveland. I'm with Thickling and & Company and our partner, uh, the Novair Group, is the applicant. We, uh, just for clarification, we happen to be, actually it's not happenstance uh, what brings us here tonight. We are the developer of the low water apartment community that uh, was mentioned earlier just to the north of the subject site. Uh, as background, that was a zone site that we purchased uh, last year and started construction. Um, the property that we're talking about tonight is uh, the property that, that basically is our entryway, or we viewed it as our entryway for background. We are building a, a uh, uh, high quality apartment community uh, there and investing quite a bit of money. And we take a great deal of pride in what we do uh, when we realized that the property uh, leading up to ours was both for sale and also zoned commercial with what we would consider to be less than desirable uh, uses potentially. Uh, we decided to purchase it with the idea that we could create a nice uh, transition from Jennings Mill Road up to our property uh, of the primary development of, of our apartments and, and maintain both the aesthetic uh, approach and the quality of the neighborhood. Um, so our, our, our motivation is both uh, defensive and positive in that we think that it will be a, a, a positive addition to the neighborhood. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, between Fickling and Novair Group, we have developed about just short of 30,000 uh, uh, apartment units uh, in the Sun Belt, get, uh, stretching from Colorado to Florida and as far north into the Carolinas and Virginia. Uh, we have a good long track record of uh, delivering high quality uh, uh, apartment communities that we're very proud of. Um, uh, Fickling and Company has been in business since 1939, and the Nobear Group has been in business since 1992. So we've, we've stood the test of time and uh, have certainly developed uh, a uh, uh, reputation that we're, we're both very proud of. Um, um, I can speak if Scott hasn't joined us. I'll try to speak to the, to the points of the report. Again, I apologize if he's not here. That would be great if you could do that. I'm going to do my best. I'll tell you, uh, I'm I am purely and and I'm I'm winging it now. So please, thank you for your patience. Um, just just going through it uh, is 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 indicated in the application. Uh, we're looking to develop twenty uh, dwelling units that will total uh, fifty six bedrooms. Um, these will be townhouse designed. Uh, again, it's, the idea is to provide a, a nice transitional use uh, from Jennings Mill Parkway up to our property. The, uh, under the current zoning, my understanding is that you could potentially build a hotel, a car care center, uh, 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 office, uh, parking lots, and even self-storage. So we, we view that uh, from our perspective, is is something that we just would not we prefer not to have. Um, if you look at the site plan, we uh, have have pushed the buildings up towards Jennings Mill Parkway with the idea that we would be able to create a nice streetscape from Jennings Mill Parkway first, but it also provides even more buffer from both the uh, environmentally safe or uh, protected areas in the back as well as our neighbors that I guess would be uh, to our east, I think is that, that direction. Um, our 
design it will be uh, pretty traditional um, with respect to uh, nice roof lines uh, uh, nice fenestration on the outside will be a combination of uh, stone and or brick and uh, uh, siding um, each one of the homes will have uh, garages um, our uh, anticipated market is uh, uh, professionals and, and probably are going to spill into uh, empty nesters and uh, retirees that our, our history in, in all of our developments, we tend to attract a more uh, mature uh, uh, established resident. Um, uh, our, our homes are typically bigger than what you would, you would see in an apartment community. Um, and they attract people that have stuff and not necessarily as, as price sensitive. Um, our uh, site plan, if you'll see, is in, the, in four different buildings. So they are uh, basically averaging five units per building. Um, we would build them all at the same time um, with anticipated start of sometime early 2021. Can you hear me now? Minutes in. Scott, did you get in by phone? Can you hear me? Yes. I, okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, video conferences all day for the last three months, and this is the one that the video the audio doesn't work. So I'm sorry for the delay. Um, Mr. Bobby, thank you for picking up on that. Um, I think you covered most of what I've, the comments that I would like to make. Um, basically, we covered the two waivers that we are asking for, um, both of which are very small. Uh, one for the height is based on the fact that we have excessive future right-of-way that may or may not be used in the future. So we want to try and push our buildings up to the street as far as possible. Um, the other one is for, uh, that's for the setback and for the building height, um, really because the topography slopes both from side to side and from front to back. Uh, we, we need a little bit of exception there. It's to note that the code itself will allow for exceptions to to height by, uh, by right if you increase your setback. And the only reason we cannot make that happen is because of the cemetery that's located in the center of our property. Um, if it wasn't for that, we would be, we would qualify for that uh, by right exception for height and have no need for the waiver. But um, that, that cemetery, we have done survey on it, had an archeological um, review on it, and we are, we are certain we're not gonna be encroaching into it. Um, as far as this use is concerned, it's a good transition between the single family that we have uh, with Wickersham and the existing commercial, the existing uh, multifamily that um, um, on both sides in the new development to our north. Um, we uh, we very much appreciate y'all's time on this. If y'all have any questions at all, we'd be we'd be happy to address those as appropriate. I will say one more thing is that we did look at the letter that was sent out today from the neighborhood. We have reached out to that individual and left a message to try and establish contact with the neighborhood. They were not listed um, early on, so we, we didn't have a contact. Now we do. We will make sure we make contact with the neighbors and be sure to understand any concerns and provide information that, to them uh, as needed. Um, so with that, uh, thank you all so much for your time. We uh, look forward to your comments and, and happy to ask any questions, ask any questions that uh, you might have. Thank you very much. Make sure I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you all tag team to that well, in spite of your uh, <laughs> difficulty with our online work here. Um, so we'll then come back uh, to within the commission. And do we have um, comments that we might want to make to the applicant as they begin to put together their plan? Uh, Mr. Scarborough? Yeah, uh, assuming there's nobody left in the auditorium. Um, there's not. Does athens Clark County have any opinion on the completion of the Jennings Mill Parkway across the, the bypass there, across the loop? I know, I know it's been rumored for many years. Um, and, and, the likelihood of that leads me to the question of how far it is from the front door of these townhomes to that right-of-way line. So 
A question for Mr. Griffin and then a question for the applicants, I guess. Uh, with regard to the first question on the on the ultimate build out of the parkway, it is still in, in long range plans as a future corridor. Um, when the Law Water multifamily was built at the end of what is now Jennings Mill Parkway there and currently under construction, we still required a set aside along the edge of it for the in case. The, the flip side of that is is that project is, is not programmed, not in a long range plan from an MPO standpoint and a previous request from GDOT to consider looking into putting another overpass right there has gone, basically it, it has received negative comments. So it is, it's a project that um, 25 years ago when I was young and starting was one that we thought, you know, that was the connecting road all the way across through and ultimately tied into the road that is now <clears throat> the road that Lowe's and Home Depot are on where it crosses Epps Bridge Parkway. That road is supposed to go all the way across. Obviously, there were changes in, in routes and alternatives. Um, you know, the other interesting thing about this property, if you go way back into the probably the late 90s, the, the property, the big piece at the end of the cul-de-sac that's now under construction for law water was at one point approved for about... 850,000 square feet of office space um, under an employment type zoning designation. And this is kind of the last piece of the pie that is still carrying that old employment zone. The rest of it has all since been removed. Um, but that was also part of what was leading to the design of that 100 foot right of way of the four lane divided median parkway that was to go all the way from um, the Jimmy Daniel Road out on the far end of Atlanta Highway, ultimately tie in go over the loop and tie into Daniel's bridge, I believe, on the other side in Oconee. And obviously that never happened. And, and, and so then my second question, how far is it from the front door to the, uh, to the right of way, given that I'm not going to hold my breath that there's ever going to be a car that close to the front? But. Uh, the setback requirement is 15 feet, and we're asking for a five-foot exception. So we're asking it to be 10 feet to the right of way from the from the building. So uh, it's not it's not a huge ask. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Kenman. Uh, mm -hmm. Alice. Uh, thank you. I just uh, and Brad, thank you for that little bit of a uh, history re review you gave us um, because the, the previous thing we had before us was asking for a zoning, zoning request from employment to residential and I expressed the opinion that I don't like to move from employment to residential um, but I guess uh, location is everything um, so uh, in, in, in this location I, I, I can I can see myself supporting this um, this kind of rezone, especially since it's type two. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? I don't I see anyone. I have a, a comment, um, and you have addressed it. I think Mr. Hanks has addressed it. Um, but I just want it to be stated by us that um, we feel really uh, strongly about communication with the people who would be impacted by this. And um, so there's a whole subdivision here that it appears you haven't talked with. And um, so we would want to hear information from them when this comes back um would be very nice if they might even share information but you you certainly can't uh, make that make that happen but if they feel good about it they're certainly more likely to support it um and so what i read in um what i uh, received here from mr dr willis is um, um an enormous amount of questions about every component, which certainly signals that they don't know anything about what's going on. So that's very important for you to do. Okay. 
other, yes. other comments, um, questions? All right, if not, then good luck to you and we will look forward to seeing Maxine, you. Maxine, did we, did we miss one comment here? I thought I saw a hand. I stay a hand. <laughs> Did, so did Sarah, I do have a comment. Oh, Brad, I'm sorry. Brad didn't it's see you and I didn't either. I, but that's I, okay. three people, so. I was actually, um, you know, most of what everyone said tonight, I've generally agreed with, and I feel the same way about this one, but I was going to say basically what Maxine just said, um, in that I, I generally like the idea of this, development going in there. I don't have a particular problem with the idea of requesting uh, to build closer to the roadway, um, but but just would encourage, now that they have reached out and you have the contact information, it sounds like you already have the plan anyway, so those wheels were set in motion, so I would just encourage you to really follow that up because that, you know, definitely is something we take into consideration too. So, but otherwise, I, I generally like the idea of this. Thank you. Ms. Morales? Yeah, hey, I thought since you're all here for comments, I might as well um, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, but um, I, is, it, is it correct that, so this is, I don't want to say this is part of a larger development, but there's kind of a larger idea going on here where these, you, you mentioned these are kind of like a gateway into another development. So the, the work that's going on at the, where the parkway dead ends there, is that, is that, another like development that's going on that is the same owner as this is that how those are connected i think mr cleveland may be able to answer that one best yeah yes that it is the same ownership we are uh again the same same as the apartments that are currently under construction okay um, all right thanks. yes ma'am um yeah so i don't um i don't have a problem with the setback and um yeah i you know i think in general it's so thanks. Thank you. All right. Other comments? If we don't see your hands, you all speak up. Okay. Then we will move forward with our, I think, final application for the night. Yes. Um, this is a preliminary planned development. Again, a planned development. This is case number PD 2020-04-1125 located at 498 Little Oak Street. The purpose of this request is to divide a parcel currently zoned as RS5, single family residential in the airport overlay, into two parcels, both zoned RS5, uh, plan development, single family resident, in airport overlay plan development in order to construct two new single family residences on what is currently undeveloped land. Rick, you're on. Rick, I think you're muted. Hold on a second. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay, let me try this again. This is the location map. Uh, this is uh, the dots you see on the map are uh, the indication of the airport overlay. And you can see the one parcel here at the corner of Little Oak Street, Dublin Street, as well as Old Winnable Road. And here's the uh, aerial view. The property is currently undeveloped or currently vacant. It has, was developed before, but currently uh, vacant. Traditional neighborhood future land use designation would remain, as well as the zoning of single family, uh, just adding the PD plan development designation. The request is to subdivide the property um, within the airport overlay zone into a lot, into two lots, uh, less than one acre, and that is the minimum lot size for the airport overlay. In order to construct two single family residences on what is currently undeveloped land, it is compatible with the uh, underlying zoning category of RS5, and there's no change in future land use. You see here the property is being undeveloped. Uh, the Firefly Trail, the, railroad, the old railroad track is right 
adjacent to it. Um, and then we have the site plan that will be a bonding site plan as well as architecture. These are the two houses proposed. So tonight we receive with comments to benefit the applicant so he can prepare the master plan development. And the staff has a couple of recommendations. Um, like the master PD submittal to address a bit more how the applicant intends to provide specific benefits to the county for this plan development. Uh, with the plan development, when you ask for waivers, we expect uh, you know, something back in return. Uh, the applicant should coordinate with the with planning to correct some issues with some zoning uh, issues with setbacks, trees, and, and lighting. Uh, driveways need to be brought to compliance with transportation and public work standards. And the staff would like to see uh, a furnished sidewalk, given that there is an existing sidewalk network proximity to the Firefly Trail and new commercial development uh, almost directly adjacent to this property. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Um, all right. And we will ask our applicant, uh, Mr. Hawes, can you um, describe your uh, plan with us? I do want to reiterate for people who may be watching that, again, this is plan development. We will not be taking a vote on this. We are re uh, receiving information and then providing information to the applicant um, so that he will have some insights into what um, we think uh, uh, would help him in his plan. So, Mr. Halls. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? I'm good. And you? Great. Doing well. Um, so name Jeff Hawes, um, investor owner of uh, J. Hawes Real Estate, uh, address 2017 Stonewater Court, uh, Houston, Georgia. Uh, the plan initially when I purchased the, the lot was to subdivide it um, from the beginning. Um, and I ran into an issue um, when I submitted everything to the county because I was in the airport overlay and was told that was the only reason why that I. I would have to go through doing the plan development at this point. So that's really why I'm coming through to actually um, get the, um, the plan development. Um, that was the most, um, I guess, um, best way to actually um, get it accomplished. Um, but the plan, from reading your comments that you give that you give me so far, um, the biggest thing I think is you guys have a question about how big the driveways are and also um, uh, the type of homes that I'm building and what benefit would Athens um, get from me spending the lots instead of um, building one home. I think the biggest benefit is um, on the main busy intersection um, right across from the trail, there'll be two houses that's um, farmhouse style homes, board and batting. That looks appealing to the public, which will raise the property values. Um, and as far as the driveway, that I made it that size, and I want it to be that size because it is a it's a main intersection. And my idea of creating that size driveway, is so whoever, whichever family purchased the homes, would be able to turn around in their driveway and pull out, you know, instead of having to back out into traffic. Um, but basically. Um, Today, I'm here to get your comments to make this thing a, a simple process for me and, and for you all as well. So uh, with that being said, if, if there's any comments that you can give me to make any improvements that you see um, to make this thing work, that's that's what I'm willing to do. Thank you very much, Mr. Halls. Um, yes, are there any people? There's no one left in the auditorium. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am, you're correct. Nobody left. All right. So then we will move to a uh, discussion amongst commissioners um, so we can provide information to Mr. Hawes. Mr. Scarborough. I I happened to find myself in 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 front of this property uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it looked to me like there may have been two homes there at one time. Do we know anything about that? Uh, no, sir. I don't. I think it was only one home there. Yeah. I saw. I saw two curb cuts because I came up across the the dead end for construction. I had to turn around, so I had to hunt for a place. So, 
I used your I used your curb cut. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> you, get it. you get it. Um, but, but yeah, that was my only question. Was there was it historically two lots, or we don't? We, you say it was one, so I'm thinking it's one. Now. I I can get with my agent to 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 verify that, but I'm I'm assuming I'm thinking that there was only one home on the lot. Okay, thank you. That was all I had right now. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kenman. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I just want to say that this is really very important property um, as, as uh, the applicant, Mr. Halls, recognizes because it's right there on the Firefly Trail. Um, I, I, I think that, that we probably need to find a way to have more than one dwelling on this property. Um, I understand the, the reasons why we have the airport overlay, which is making him go through this process um, to subdivide an RS5 into two RS5s. Um, but I, I, here's, here's my comment that I, that I wanna make. Um, I think that I, I would like to see this happen and I would like to see the best possible two houses on that property that you could imagine, because I, I mean, I think obviously that people are going to want to move into these kind of places. Um, I'll stop, I'll stop at that. And, and uh, but I'm interested in to, to, to hear what other commissioners think about the air pay, airport overlay issue that we're facing right now. Ms. Morales. Um, yeah, it's funny, this airport overlay thing, it's, um, I think it's kind of ironic because so much of this neighborhood is small lots. And I, mm. I honestly don't have a problem with making this two lots. Um, I think it fits with, you know, what, what else is going on in the neighborhood. Uh, my main concern, and I guess it's, we're, I feel we're a little lucky in that we have, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry we did go through this because of the airport overlay, but um, I want to take the opportunity, I guess, since we, we have the chance to talk to you. Um, I just, I don't want these houses to look like student housing. Like, I'm just going to say it. Like, I don't want them to look like infill that's coming into East Athens and is going to get rented to the students. So um, I just, you know, I mean, yeah, this is this is a really great property. I've been down the Firefly Trail and I've literally thought like, wow, what a great neighborhood to live in. I just don't, I just worry that the neighbors are going to be like, oh, great. Here's like two huge houses that are now like overshadowing our houses. So that's my only, that was my only concern when I looked at the, what was proposed. It was just how does, how did these houses reflect the rest of the neighborhood? And I'm not saying that they have to look like the other houses. It's just, I think it's more about scale and and like where they're going and a reflection of the neighborhood that they're going to be surrounded by. So that was really my only thought. So thank you. Thanks. Mr. So Paul? would it be better? Um, so one of them is a three bedroom and the other is a four bedroom. Um, so would you guys would rather or ladies like to see both three bedrooms or two bedrooms? I mean, whatever it takes to make it work is what I'm willing to do. But um, me, myself, I would want to have an extra bedroom in my home if, I, if I'm a single person moving in or if I have kids. So is there a certain type of um, limit to bedrooms that you would want to see in that area? I mean, I, I don't, you know, if you can get 10 bedrooms in it, that's fine. That's not going to bother me. It's more about the scale. Um, so I think, you know, if you have a house that's, I mean, just looking at the, the houses that are around it in the neighborhood, it's, um, and yeah, like you're not, you know, you don't have to do any of this. This is just my opinion, but, um, you know, it's, it's more about the, the, the so I mean, really the, the height of the house and how it relates to the houses next to it. I mean, if there's a way to tuck those upstairs bedrooms underneath the roof a little bit more, so it doesn't extend up quite as high i mean anything like that um you know i think would would be would be great but i mean just really think i mean these these houses are going to be like a showpiece really with with the way that corner is and everything so it's really a chance to to really get it right and make a nice um a nice gateway to that part of the neighborhood okay mr hall another comment okay mr hall yeah i want to Echo basically everything that Alice and Kristen said, except for that bit about 10 bedrooms uh, from Kristen. Um, 
I think uh, broadly speaking, you know, looking at the map of that neighborhood, it's all very small lots for the most part, with just a couple of exceptions. And I understand the policies behind the airport overlay, but um, in terms of, of densities uh, there, I think two houses on that lot is is consistent with the neighborhood. Um, I also uh, agree entirely. This is sort of people are getting off the loop. They're dri starting to drive into Athens and and this is kind of a, a showpiece. This is part of what they see. It's like a gateway, uh, you know, for that access point. And um, so attractively designed houses um, would be great. I think one suggestion uh, for the applicant, take it for what it's worth, um, in terms of uh, features, the staff highlighted that these very large parking pads, um, you know, raise raise sort of questions. And I, and I agree with that, not just from the sort of student housing look perspective, as, as also from the show piece, you know, people are getting off and driving into Athens and seeing that and being consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. I wouldn't want to see large parking pads there that were going to be occupied by um, four vehicles. And, you know, uh, but, but as single family homes that are sort of in keeping with the scale of the neighborhood generally, I think it's a wonderful location. And, and uh, you certainly have the square footage, the acreage on that lot to to warrant um, two separate single family homes. And um, so generally speaking, I'm, I'm favorably disposed to the project, but I, I echo uh, what Ms. Kinman and what uh, Ms. Morales said. Got it. Other comments? Ms. Beresford? One thing I wanted to point out is um, I know that you are um, Mr. Haas, that you're that you don't live in Athens, and so whether we, whether I agree with this law or not, we do have a law on the books that you can't have more than two unrelated people in a dwelling. And so, if you didn't already know that, I think that's a useful piece of information to know when you're investing in Athens. So, kind of thinking about who your prospective renters might be, it's just important, I think, to remember that that when you when you are renting let's say you're renting you and i think technically and somebody correct me if i'm wrong and i i want this law to go away but um it is the case that you actually can't rent to three unrelated people is that correct in a single family zoned parcel in a single, in a single family, family zoned, zoned yeah. parcel yeah That's and correct. so i'm just stating that as you're kind of thinking about the size of the houses and how many bedrooms and things like that it just to just in case you didn't already know that, just to let you know. But I also agree with the previous comments that um, I was just looking at a map of the parcels just generally in that neighborhood. And with the exception of that large parcel in Dublin that's immediately north of this, north-ish of this, that there those parcels are really small. And so I would be inclined to not really have a problem with the idea of subdividing. And I, I think it's great that somebody wants to make an investment in, in this part of town. And um, I think it's a cool opportunity to have, you know, been able to acquire that land and build on it. So um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come back with. And I hope that you have enough in your budget for great landscaping. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We got it. We got it. <laughs> Mr. Tucker. Yeah. I've I just wanted to say that I do echo some of the, the comments that have been said. Um, the only thing, I, I think the parking, um, the pad, um, just looking at that and the size and scale of it, um, just making sure that, that kind of fits the house and the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't, I like the houses. I have no, you know, no heartburn with those and the way they look, you know, knowing the market in Athens. Um, knowing the need in Athens, I, I think you've got um, two great ideas for two houses. Um, so I, as Sarah said, um, good landscaping and, and um, the parking, you know, look at that. But I think it's it could be a great project. I have no problem dividing it. All right. Thanks. Other comments? Ms. Kinman. Uh, thank you. Just going to make one more comment. Um, which is that uh, the reason we have the opportunity to, to have this discussion is because of the air, airport overlay zone. Um, otherwise, 
you know, this 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 would not rise to the level of planning commission. So, uh, but but it it is what it is. We are we do have the opportunity to um, offer suggestions on how to uh, develop this property because uh, the, I think we all agree that subdividing is a good idea. Um, I think we also all agree that uh, looking at the existing neighborhood, the fabric of the neighborhood, and finding a way to get uh, four or five bedrooms, as Kristen said, tucked under the roof is a, is a, is a good way to think about this project. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Scarborough. Yes, I, I, I wanted to, I guess, roll up some of these comments with my thoughts. Um, the airport overlay has always been something that I understand it theoretically, um, and and it's 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 hard to say it out loud. But the idea, I guess, of the airport overlay is to minimize tragedies should something go wrong, and so that kind of leads us to the thought of you know fewer bedrooms or smaller houses or a smaller number of houses uh, go towards that goal. Even if there were two houses there, two houses that didn't have 10 bedrooms apiece uh, gives us less heartburn to, to sort of step outside the overlay, the, the idea of the overlay. So, you know, not necessarily a smaller home, but not one that's, that's, crammed to the rafters with bedrooms and that also leads to the thought of the parking pads a smaller parking pad encourages less occupants because of less parking although whoever lives there i hope will have a bicycle and and get around that way because i would if i lived there Right. And my only other comment was I know the staff, uh, I saw somewhere something about a sidewalk being recommended, maybe, or maybe that was in my head. But mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of having the sidewalk in front of there. It encourages other people to fill in. It fills in some of the blanks or it starts eliminating the blanks and, and it encourages people in both directions to add sidewalks as we move move along and i'm a huge proponent especially in a neighborhood like this where traffic is bound to pick up as uh as it becomes more developed so i would encourage you to consider sidewalks in your plan and so that's all i have thank you Thanks, sir any other comments Ms. morales I feel like I should clarify. I'm not a fan of 10 bedrooms. My point was simply that we don't regulate the number of bedrooms. That's all. It was, it was never in the plan, so I don't even know. Like <laughs> Any other comments? I have some. Um, I, I'm, um, I didn't fall into um, this as easily and as quickly as as my fellow commissioners did. Um, but um, my concern has has to do, we, we dealt with one of these last month where we're building um, houses in neighborhoods that look totally different, that are very, have nothing to do with what they look like. And so as I was looking at these and knowing that area very well, um, I, I thought, oh my goodness, same old, same old. We just did this last month. Now we're going to do it again. Because there really aren't two-story houses around there. Um, they, they are very small lots. I, I don't, but it, it, right there. Not necessarily behind there, but right in there, they're smaller lots. Um, but uh, so I, I can acquiesce on that. But um, when, um, we start building houses that look very different from what neighborhoods look like. I think we um, do a great disservice to the neighbors as well as um, to um, just the overall look of what is there. With that said, subdividing the property um, and trying to get four or five houses, as has been said, tucked under a roof, on a property that is um, point zero point one five acres or 
0.17 acres is a little more challenging. Um, you, you know, you got to go up to add bedrooms, uh, to add more stuff. And as you go up, you look different from what is there. So um, um, different is not always, uh, it's not always bad. Um, but I, I feel like that um, um, there should be a little more looking at the neighborhood that does exist and how I can get what I need while fitting in with. I was really interested in the, and we got a comment today um, from one of the neighbors um, who was so excited that it was going to be housing rather than commercial. And mm -hmm. so that really helps us know that I think the neighborhood is likely to feel that, that way, although we don't know, which leads me to the next thing of um, have you talked with neighbors? Have you talked with people about what you're planning? I think that's really important for you to have discussions with the neighbors about what you're planning to do and what they might like. Um, so when things come back to us and we say, so what did the neighbors think? You know, we, we would um, have some information related to that. They may even tell us themselves, as did the one who, who uh, submitted today. So... Um, the other, the, the other thing that I um, wanted to speak to was the sidewalk. I, I feel very strongly that the sidewalk needs to be there. Uh, there is some sidewalk there, and there is a lack of sidewalk uh, 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 in, in that area. But you're, go, you're going in and you're building new development, and um, we want it to, to be as good as it can be for the neighborhood. And, I feel like um, as you ask for waivers and uh, giving something back might include uh, the inclusion of sidewalk for, for people in the area. Um, and then the other thing, and I want to be really sure I'm right, but I, I want you to know that um, I guess in the long run, we're seeing this because of airport overlay. Um, but, um, and maybe it, the zoning wouldn't be what it is, or the, not, not zoning, but the, the rule, the, the um, um, block size issue would not be what it is if there was not the airport. But the fact is, the, the, what you are asking to waive is minimal, minimum parcel size. And um, I guess it is that because of the airport, but it still is that, which says lots can't be smaller than one acre. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a give and take on it is airport overlay. And the reason it's that is to minimize, as Jeff said, the danger of if something happened. Um, um, to, to minimize the devastation, I guess. But um, the fact is, it is a, a one acre, we have a one acre minimum. And um, so, you know, all of that said, um, yes, the reason you're here is for airport overlay, but really the reason you're here is because minimum lot size is one acre. Mm -hmm. Whatever caused that. It's, airport overlay, but it, it is, that's the minimum lot size. So I don't have an issue with dividing the property either because I think it, that, will, that, that goes with what you see and with what is up there. Um, oh, but oh. but I'm, I am more concerned about the way the houses fit into them. Okay, uh, question. Um so when I rode through the neighborhood, I seen a bunch of, I didn't see a, a lot of two-story homes. So right. is that something that you guys would, would request more of? or do, I mean, is it an issue that I'm doing two stories? Or I mean, what, what's the thoughts on that? Would you rather see a single-story home? I mean, I'll, I will say I have no issue with the two-story. I mean, I think that you'll have people with houses, um, some houses, 
may be redeveloped in the future. It could be a new house built or they could be remodeled or, you know, I, I don't have an issue with it, but that's me personally. Hold on. I guess, Mr. House, I would not vote against it if it was if, if it was two story. I, although I don't even have a vote here as a chair. I don't even have a vote, but um, uh, I, w I wouldn't vote against it. But I, I just I, I want the neighborhoods uh, to be respected in the way they are developed. That's really important to me. I, I, um, I, I'm from that area. And, yeah. and so I, I just, uh, I want the neighborhoods to be respected and um, um, conversations with people, discussions with people as you decide what to build would, will be important. Okay. Ms. Morales? Um, so I was just curious, the, the photos that are in the packet that we got, those houses already exist? Yes, in Athens. And they, they're, or they're also in East Athens, correct? They're, so, they're downtown Athens. I don't, I'm, I don't think. They're off of First Street? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I guess this kind of just goes back to my, my comment of, like, make sure you're reflecting the neighborhood. Because if you're just taking the same house plan and just rebuilding it elsewhere <laughs> in East Athens that's already been built, um that's not really the spirit of that so okay any other comments all right we thank you mr halls and we thank you for your interest in our community and most of all we thank you for your obvious um, um interest in what suggestions we were making and it's so well. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, then that gets us through all of our applications. And so we'll move on with the remainder of our um, of our agenda. We'll have to say we are a little ahead of where I thought we would be. So time wise, I know you all are fainting here, but I didn't think we would be through be be to this point at this. All right, so we move now. We have officer elections um, that will take office in July. And uh, Ms. Kinman and Mr. Scanlon um, were our nominating committee. And do you have a report? Apparently he does, but he doesn't know he's muted. <laughs> hey, I got Actually, we do. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to reprise our role of last year. Thank you. Our, our nominee for chairman is uh, Maxine Issa. We thought she did a great job this year and would do a great job next year. For, for vice chair would be Sarah Beresford, who was also our vice chair for last year. That's contingent upon her reappointment to the commission. And I would say if they if she's not reappointed, that our mayor and commission would need to have their heads examined. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I nominate I, those those positions. I know they love hearing you say that, Mr. Stan. Um, <laughs> all right, then is it appropriate for me to go on with this, or does someone else need to do this? Um, I, I, I think we need a motion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, and and based on my uh, my committee chair, I think Jim's chair and I'm co-chair. Uh, based on his eloquent uh, uh, discussion of the issues, I would like to make a motion that we um, approve the nominating committee's report. Thank you. Is there but, which which is to um, basically continue the slate? See, Jim and I were so smart last year; we got it right the first time, so we're just continuing it this time. <laughs> Very nice. I don't even think we need a second since it's me to report. But I'm still as I'm suddenly I'm into this. Should I be doing this? Uh, is it all right for me to leave these elections if I'm on yes. the ballot? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Then um, thank you, um, Alice and Jim. We appreciate your work. I, I, I know uh, that your work was <laughs> was quick. And so I really appreciate that. 
Um, and so shall we vote on these as a slate or shall we vote on these separately? Maybe we should vote on these separately. All right. No, uh, I think you could do it as a slate. Certainly. Oh. All right. Then um, um, shall we don't need a roll call vote on this. Uh, all those in favor of adopting the slate of officers for next year that was submitted by the nominating committee, please raise your hand. All those opposed? All right. And I guess we have it, Sarah. <laughs> Glad I hitched my horse to your wagon. Oh, no. I, I, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a, re uh, oh, like we're moving into our subcommittee reports. Um, and so I think there will be reports from both groups. So let's start with the housing group um, who is sharing that information. Matt? Yeah. Um, so just very briefly, we um, are uh, meeting again on Tuesday where I anticipate that we will finalize uh, our already very nearly final memo uh, to the committee regarding accessory dwelling units. Um, the next item on our agenda is um, inclusionary zoning and incentives for uh, affordable units, um, which I anticipate will take, uh, you know, a good couple or three meetings um, to work through. Um, so that's, that's where we are and where we're going next. Thank you very much. Um, and the land use subcommittee, Kristen, you want to share since you were our minute taker and Lucy is uh, absent this evening. Sure. Yeah, we had um, we had two special guests, Bob Smith and I'm forgetting his name from Williams Buck, and Associates. Buck Bacon. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Buck Bacon. And we talked about the mass grading ordinance. And um, with the idea that they were kind of like our boots on the ground, um, giving their perspective from a developer's standpoint of like what the what the hurdles are um, with the idea that if we can, if we can remove some of the costs on the for, on the front end, how does that help the cause of affordable housing on the back end? And, um, and so, you know, part of that is just sort of the supply and demand kind of thing where um, if we can encourage um, more dense development, then that overall will affect housing prices. Um, but they they actually raised some interesting points. Um, for example, the um, retaining the, um, the tree canopy, for example, has a direct impact on mass grading of a site. Um, so that's... They, they kind of urge us to think about what's already in place that that already impacts what they can do with the grading. Um, and, oh gosh, I should have just pulled up the, the minutes in front of me. Um, help me out, Maxine. What else did they, what else were they mentioning? Um, it was there. I think there were a number of things I, we have yeah. not met since, the, since meeting with them. So we have a lot of things to talk about. But they oh. did give us a lot of good uh, thoughts and ideas. Yeah. So some of the things they mentioned is, so for example, like right now you have to cut the roads first and then you would have to do sort of lot by lot grading. And um, so the problem with that is you're spending all this money to get all the infrastructure in and there's no place to put the dirt when you're cutting the roads in. Um, so that led to a lot of just truck traffic to get the dirt off the site. Um, and then there's also issues of, um, they, they asked us and we were meeting with transportation and public works for our next meeting because they apparently also have some ideas. And one of the things that our guests mentioned was that I guess there's this sort of road standard standards guide that we have like even more strict requirements about like the level of roads. And so what happens is they have to make the roads even more level. I may make like be messing this up. But my understanding was that they said with our requirements, the roads have to be graded more than what would be like a national standard. And so it's, it, that additionally adds to the cost up front of creating, you know, carving out these neighborhoods and things like that. Um, so we talked about ways that we could um, 
allow for more efficiencies? Like, is there a middle ground option between what we have now versus just what used to be? Because all this started before the last recession when now we have the pipe farms that kind of came up out of that. So, um, you know, could there be phases? Are there trade-offs that we could give people more um, areas to grade and uh, turn <coughs> our density? So, so, yeah, that's kind of where we went with that. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of work left to do on that, but we will be. We had some really um, good uh, discussion with them. Um, so that takes care of subcommittee reports. Um, I don't have a chair report. I do have a miscellaneous announcement in the end, but let's go to Brad. Brad, do you have uh, reports for us? I, I do. Just a couple things. Um, first, a report from the commission meeting Tuesday night the two items went forward the plan development at Finley Street on the old days in site was approved unanimously um, as you recommended and the rezoning for the um, Hickman Drive the, the Bethel property was also approved unanimously so those were the only two items that went forward um, the only other thing I've got quickly it, and I've I'm always very limited on this information, so I honestly don't know, but our two planning commission members that are both eligible for reappointment, um, but they were up for rolling off this year are Mr. Scanlon and Ms. Beresford. I don't know if the two of you have reapplied, but I certainly hope you have. And <laughs> if you have not, um, we have absolutely enjoyed working with you. If one of you or both have made the decision not to reapply. I never know until I get the slate at the very end. So uh, I just didn't want to miss the opportunity because it is, this is, would be your last meeting if you did not reapply. I thank you very Speaking for myself, I am not going to reapply. I think that it's a post for a younger person than me. And I'm cruising into my mid 70s and it's time to move on. Uh, we have we have very much enjoyed working with you, and best of best of luck. I've enjoyed working with you. We thank you very much, Jim, for your service. We see you could come and sit in the meetings and and cheer us on, and you know all of that, and you don't even have to answer any questions or do anything or make faces at your comments. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Um, my miscellaneous uh, announcement is um, really um, a, a personal observation, but we all, you know, we work hard and um, we get to know each other uh, on different levels. And um, I learned quite through my granddaughter um, that uh, Matt's daughter, Elna Gilbertson Hall, um, except I think you all say Elena, don't you? Elena, is that right? Yes. yes. Uh, was valedictorian at Clark Central this year. And so I think that's worth commendation. So, Matt, congratulations to you, to your wife, and certainly to Elena. That, that's a wonderful accomplishment. Oh, Matt, that's so you're it. Erica's husband. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Maxine, for, uh, for bringing that up. I will let Elena know. That's great. Um, uh, that's something to be quite, quite proud of. You know, I have a vested awesome. interest in what happens at Clark Central. So, where please. is she going to school in the fall? Yeah, uh, congratulations. Thank you all. Uh, she's going to the University of Chicago. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. That's great. That's great. Tell her not to get caught up with all those conservative economists while she's there. <laughs> <laughs> she knows better. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you all for your hard work tonight. We um, made it in three hours, <laughs> but we did a lot of work tonight. So I thank you for um, getting yourselves prepared. You are all obviously very prepared. And um, I, I, I think that um, you're a great group. So thank you for doing that. So we, uh, Matt, I'm uh, uh, Brad. Yes. Um, I understood that whether we have a second meeting or not is to be decided. Has that been decided? A second meeting this month? Yes. No, you took care of everything tonight. Okay, good. All right. That's, That's why we had that stocked agenda. I, I <laughs> did that a little bit on purpose to make you guys get moving. So I put them all on there. 
And you did <laughs> all great. Right, that's great. Well, well we done. will see you all the first um, um, Thursday in July. Have a July. nice day. Yes. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. I second. Yes. Yes, yes, yes.